You don't even seem to understand the show. You just ruin everything. You gotta be funny in here. I can't wait for you guys to see this on Howard TV. <laughs> Daily shows, classics, and exclusive behind-the-scenes access. Well, that's gonna be on Howard TV. The funniest, sexiest, most star-studded network on TV is Howard TV On Demand. Hey Stern fans, welcome to Find Time, the show where you, the fans, get the opportunity to ask questions and interact with your favorite Stern Show staffers, Whack Packers, and celebrity superfans. I'm your host, Rachel Fine. Now my guest today is one of the hardest working executive producers in the history of radio. He's very well read and continuously improving his education. He is a proud former Marine who served our country in the first Gulf War, and he has run for city council. He is often the target of Ned's song parodies, and he was once arrested for a live on-air stunt in which a pig was slaughtered. He has a history in Muay Thai, meaning that he trained for a couple months and then did his first fight in which he was TKO'd in 39 seconds. Howard once called him one of the best in the business. Please welcome from Bubba the Love Sponge Show, Brent Hatley. Thanks for joining us, friend. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Outstanding. It's good Outst to see you. It's, it's good, good to see you. It's an honor to be on your show. You well, guys do a great job. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you here. We had lots of questions come in and I'm excited to ask. Sure. Fantastic. First one comes from at Kovac8, at Kovac8 asks, who are you endorsing for president of the U.S. and why? Um, that's easy. Ron Paul. Um, I've been a long time Ron Paul supporter um, because he's the only one that is truly anti-war because uh, you don't really understand how brutal war is until you go. Yeah. Um, Ron Paul was a surgeon during Vietnam and I think he understands why he's anti-war and why he's not for interfering in other countries' business, number one. Uh, number two, he wants to legalize marijuana. So what else do you want from a presidential candidate? Uh, I don't understand how he's not winning, but uh, that's that's my endorsement is Ron Paul. Excellent. Next question comes from at Cindy23. Cindy asks, has there ever been a moment on the show where you said to yourself, okay, we really screwed up this time and we will be in a lot of trouble? Yes. Um, I think I kind of got that feeling the day when you talk about the hog incident. I kind of got the feeling that day. Matter of fact, I was the one that was outside. I was on the cell phone reporting it. And I didn't really, like while I was in the moment, get that feeling, but afterwards, like, mm -hmm. because we were in a big building with salespeople and human resources and like corporate America, and the reaction of some of the people in the building, I was like, mm, this is gonna be trouble. I didn't know it was gonna be as much trouble, but I thought it was gonna be some trouble. You felt it coming. Yeah. Do you regret it now looking back? Of course, yeah. I don't think we should ever do that again. Um, but uh, on the brighter side, um, we were acquitted and our show um, has never been, not been number one since we did that. So it had, it had some good upside to it as well, but we just wouldn't do it again. Gotcha. Next question comes from Martin W. Martin asks, have you ever considered a serious political run? Yes, I just ran for city council in the city of St. Petersburg in District 3, which is where I live. Um, and in three years, I'm gonna run again. And this first time was really, I knew I wasn't gonna win. I was running against a longtime incumbent, but he's out, he's termed out and it'll be an open seat in the next term. But I needed to run this last time just to get the feel of how the political process works. And I did learn, I learned a lot about how the political process works and how to get elected. So I think I will succeed when it's an open seat. And will you be running on the legalized marijuana ticket? Uh, well, see, that's not in the purview of city council. <laughs> um, if it was in the purview of city council, yeah, that would be yeah. that would be my position. But my position right now is um, we have red light cameras in St. Pete and you get a ticket <laughs> before you get a chance to even you know argue your case in front of a judge and you don't get your um sixth amendment right to cross-examine your accuser because it's a camera right. so my my thing is would be getting rid of red light cameras i think that's a step towards european socialism when you start putting cameras on every corner so my big thing would be more freedom for everybody and no dogs chained up in the yard that's, oh, I that's, love it. that's one of the ordinances I would make is you cannot chain your dog to a tree in Florida outside and just leave it in the yard. I think the people need to vote for him. <laughs> this is an excellent, excellent platform. Next question is from Angelo Valences. He asks, what is the most bizarre setup you ever had to prepare for regarding an on-air bit? Um, it'd have to be the rat milkshake. Um, <laughs> he's holding the rat by the tail and it's circling over the blender. Oh, this is a dead rat. This is as dead as it gets. I swear to God. This is bonafide, man. I swear to God. That is the nastiest rat I've ever seen. I swear to God. I am going to puke. Now you're going to gonna blend it. I will puke. I will puke. I swear to God, I'll puke. I had to go out. There's actually a place in Florida, believe it or not, called the Rat Farm. 
and I had to go see this redneck named Buzzy. Awesome. And what he would do is he gave me, you know, they farm so many rats, a certain amount of them just die just because. So he'd give me the rats that had just died of natural causes and I'd have to go pick up the rats from the rat farm to come back <laughs> to be able to do rat milkshakes on the air. So that's the most bizarre by far. Yeah. Uh, amongst many bizarre things that we've done. Um, that was the most bizarre for sure. That sounds like it. Next question is from Eric P. Eric asks, are you still into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? I, I love it. I would love to do it. I just, I'm out of time. Um, we do two shows a day. Um, plus I do a sports show every other week. And then every Friday I do a talk show on serial killers. So <laughs> I'm really, really busy and um, I wish I could train more. Uh, I may take some private lessons. Rob Kahn was talking to me about coming down and doing some private lessons a couple times a week. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> right now, um, Boy, for those of you know, listening, just, I'm just Hoist has Brent in a back triangle, and so he's squeezing the life out of Brent. Right? But I still love Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It's, it's great exercise. It's a great lifestyle. It's a healthy lifestyle. That's what I like about it the most. Yeah. 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 from Hamburg asks, would you consider Bubba a close friend and do you hang out in private? Yes, uh, he is a close friend. Um, since he bought his racetrack, I haven't been able to hang out, hang out with him much because he's, it's a bit, it's a business, that racetrack, it's a good business because it's a, it's a good, you know, for what they pay for their entertainment dollar, they get a lot for it. But Bubba physically has to be there to run the races. So I don't see him as much as I used to, but you know, if the racetrack makes him happy, which it really, really does. You can see that he's much happier now owning a racetrack. Um, I think that. At Dave Lampert 28 asks, what is the worst thing you have ever done to piss Bubba off and how did he react? Uh, it's going to sound lame, but it was kind of big at the time, is we were in Jacksonville one time to do a broadcast. And this was before the days of GPS. It was in 02, so we really didn't have GPS. So I had map quested from the hotel to the radio studio that we had never been to. But I, we got all kinds of lost, and we walked into the door to the radio station at 6 a.m., so Bubba freaked out. I mean, he was really, really, that's the maddest I've ever seen him. Because um, you know that feeling of being lost yeah, is bad anyway. It's awful. <laughs> and being lost and knowing that you have a show to do and no time to do any prep, that was, he was furious about that. So that was, that was the worst. But now we got GPS so we don't get lost anymore. Excellent. Next question is from Perry R. Perry asks, who is better on the radio, Howard or Bubba? And what does each bring to the table? I think, I'm, see, that's not, for me, the way I listen to the radio, that's not really fair to compare um, because they both do different things. I mean, it's, it's, it's all relative, like asking somebody who, who's your favorite band. I like different bands for different reasons, and I like them both for different reasons. Howard is, these days, a lot more calm and paced and, and very deliberate. When I first started listening to Howard in the early 90s, he was all kinds of pissed off. And that's when I really became a fan of Howard because he would just bring people in machine gun and just mow them down. Um, Bubba, I like on the air. I like on the air because you never quite know. Like I, like sitting in the in the chair producing the show for the full four hours. Honestly, I'm my stomach is in knots because I just don't know what he's gonna do. And that's the thing about Bubba is you just don't know where he's gonna go with something. And that's they're just different like that. Howard's very deliberate and he kind of knows where he's going to go with things and Bubba's like a bull in a china shop so they're different um and you can't really say one's better than the other it's all relative and I, I've got a lot of respect for Phil Hendry too I mean he's I'm a huge awesome. I'm a huge fan of his but they all three do different things and I think that just like music you've got to appreciate each air personality for what they do absolutely 
Uh, next question comes from at Zuba. Zuba asks, if you had the chance to take over producing Howard's show, would you leave Bubba? <laughs> That's a tough question. That is, it really is because um, I got a lot of respect for Gary. Gary is a good friend of mine. I, I love Gary. <laughs> I really do. And everybody that works at Howard's show does a great job. And they've all been, been fantastic. Just great to me. Um, that would, uh, gosh, it would be tough for me to, to live in New York City. It would. Um, we have a lot of room here in Florida. <laughs> and uh, and Bubba kind of leaves me to my to be more a little bit more autonomous. Um, so I don't know. I, it would depend. Bubba, Bubba's been good to me, so it would be hard to leave Bubba after he's been so loyal to me after all, all these years. But Howard's also been great to me as well. <laughs> so um, I would do it if Bubba didn't have a show anymore. Fair enough. And, and Gary was not working there. Yeah, I would never take Gary's job. I'd never step on Gary's toes. Gary's a great guy. He really is. People give Gary a hard time, but and I know it's fun to goof on Gary, but Gary, um, deep down, is, is awesome. I love Gary. Awesome. I want to thank Fred for taking the time to answer the questions that you, the fans, submitted. Keep sending your questions in. You can tweet them. You can Facebook them. You can email them. You can even send a video submission. Remember, this is your show, so don't screw it up. Until next time, I'm Rachel Fine, and I hope you had a fine time. I had a fine time with you, sir. Thank you. That was fantastic. <laughs> it's enlightening. <laughs>
Uh, Are they listening back there, Scott? So, yeah. Richie, is it true you still take guitar lessons and and, and vocal lessons? Yes, you, I do, yeah. That's uh, that's an amazing dedication because uh, I happen to think you're one of the best guitar players. You uh, really are you, tremendous sir. guitar. And I think you're underrated, are you not? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. In some places I am, and in some places I'm not, you know. When they make Does he lists, make those lists? Yeah, when they make lists of some of the greatest guitar players of all time, they leave you off the list, and yet I've seen you play, and I, and I know the music. Why are you left off? Off of those lists? You know, I think it's a part of, you know, in Bon Jovi, I don't get a chance to actually work out a lot. Right. So, at that, in essence, you know, when you make a solo record like this, right. man, I got to tell you something. I want you to listen to the record because I think you're really going to like it. There's a, it's a, I get to wind out a lot more. You know what I, I felt in rock music? There's not a lot of jamming going on. Right. Right. You know what I mean? So, I, I got a bunch of great musicians with me. Yeah. I'll be and I don't have my electric guys. here today, but right. um, on the record, you'll find. A lot of great songs, and me, I get to be a vocalist again, which is always cool. You were you started out as a vocalist. Yeah, vo- yeah. I every was a, band you were ever in, you were a vocalist. I was a lead singer, yeah. And then when you hooked up with Bon Jovi, which I don't even remember how the hell you met John and all that, but we'll go into that. But when you hooked up with him, suddenly you're not the lead singer. And that's a, what is that a blow to you? Is that a blow to your ego, or do you do you because you can get lost back there, right? Nah, not at all. You know the thing with me is I was always a working musician, musician, you know, right. and I never took it for granted. And uh, I was trying to get a, a leg up in this business any way I could. Right. So you know, I mean, what hey, convinced if you? If I'm though? just going to be like a primary songwriter and the guitar player in a great band. Hey, man, if I'm going to make it that way, that's going to be a good deal. And but obviously it paid off in space. But what convinced you? How old were you when you made the decision, okay, I'll let this guy be the lead singer? Oh, yeah. When I first got in a band, I was 23. 23? Yeah, 23. Up until then, you had been in other bands, and mm-hmm. you were the guy. You were the front man. Yeah. So what? What? why did you make the decision all of a sudden to hook up with John and let him be the front man? Well, you know, like I said, I was just joining bands upon bands upon bands. Actually, when I met John, I had already had two record deals. Right. I was on... Uh, Led Zeppelin's label, Swan Song. Right. And a failed record deal there. And then I was on Capricorn Records with a guy by the name of Duke Williams and the Extremes. Was that a was that a, a solo deal, or you had in other words you had a whole band that yeah there was a band song. and I, I was an extreme in that band so I wasn't the front man in that band particularly right. but all the other club bands I was in and all that stuff you know what I mean when you were a young guy in Swan Song which was Led Zeppelin's label I Absolutely. remember that level it was the coolest label ever even look cool oh yeah when they sign you do you think that's it I am now going to make it I am going to be famous absolutely and then when it doesn't happen is that the biggest blow in the world to your head absolutely but you got to keep on going it's like I made three records before I started my own independent label before I met John. Did you graduate high school? Yes, I did. You did? Did you go to college? I was in college, yeah. I went through two years of college. Where did you go to college? Keene College. And when you were in Keene College, you knew you wanted to be a musician? Oh, I knew I wanted to be a musician all along. Did your parents tell you, don't do this? this No, you know, they were very supportive. And and you were a guy who sat in his room and practiced guitar every day? Yeah, you know, I'm a self-taught guy. I so the that. only way you can teach yourself a, a guitar is actually to bump into your own mistakes. How do you teach yourself the guitar? I, I mean, do you listen to records and play along with them? Exactly. And and you became, emulate your heroes. Do you think that you're a genius in that you taught yourself how to play guitar? I mean, to, to me, that would seem impossible to get to the level you're at to do that yourself. You know, I, I you know I, I always had an ear for music, and I kind of learned backwards because I kind of could play by ear. Yeah. And then I kind of went to theory classes and stuff like that and actually learned the musical end of it. Were you popular in high school? I would imagine you were. Yeah, I was. Were I was a athlete? jock, and I was in bands, and oh, I was no go- you know, oh, going to goodness. different towns. You were, what were you, a football player? Uh, no, I was a basketball player, baseball player. I played a little football, but it was, I was getting my hand caught between helmets and ribs broken, and I would, hell with that shit. And, uh, and when a guy's as good looking as you, you're popular, and you play guitar, are you getting laid at 12? Or I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, man, it was pretty good, man. It was, Women right? like musicians, let's face it. Were you getting laid at a very young age? Not really. 16, 17? 17, yeah. 17 that's years That's pretty old. young, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. I bet you nailed a teacher or two, didn't you? <laughs> did you ever nail a teacher? <laughs> no, did. I didn't. You didn't? Didn't have a teacher. Wrong right? with you? I had friends that had some teachers. Right. Really? And, and so you go to high school, 
And by high school, you're hooking up in bands, and you were signed to Swan Song by the time you were what, age? I was like 19 and a half. I Unbelievable. Guess. Yeah, I was playing, you know what? I was playing in New York, uh, you know, four or five times a week. I was doing Great Gildersleeves, CBGBs, privates, places like that were really happening in the city. You know? In a way, you were blessed. I mean, th- th- most guys struggle a little more than, than even what you're talking about. I mean, the fact that you got signed so young to a label. Yeah, but you know what? The record never came out, man. Zeppelin oh. blew up. Oh. And that whole label, you know, just took a shit, basically. And the record that you produced with this with with Swan Song never came. Never out. came out. Yeah, that had to break your heart. Yeah, totally. I mean, I thought, here we go, we're going to the big time. Here it is, you know. Do you have that record somewhere? Do you have it? It's somewhere. Yeah, actually, um, after I made it with Bon Jovi, my lead singer, you know, was going through a bit of a hard time. He said, "Can I release it?" And he needed the bread, so I just relinquished everything to him, and he just took the money. And- oh, that was nice. Ah, oh, what the, you know? And 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 you felt, hey. Now that I'm in Bon Jovi, it's okay to release that? Weren't you nervous that people would compare that record to Bon Jovi? I was a kid, man. You didn't care? I didn't care at all. So, so if you were having a lot of successes uh, before Bon Jovi, wh- what made you join up with John? Did you think that he was an extraordinary singer and he could do a better job singing than you could? Well, no. You know what? I went to see him play a club called the Fountain Casino. Remember that place? No. Right, it was right I, up the street I, I from the Club Benet where you used to play. Right. right. Where I used to come see you play. Right. No. Yeah. yeah. You used to play with me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you right. called me up a bunch of times. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And I went and I saw him. And my bass player, Alec John Such, was actually playing with me at the time. And he was moonlighting with Johnny. Right. Because I, I got asked to join Kiss and I flew out to L.A. You did? Yeah. W- w- wait a second. When did that happen? 83. 83. This is before Bon Jovi. Yeah. Those guys had heard your solo stuff. I guess somebody, you know, hipped them to me, and they were interested in having me come out, so I went to California for the first time. Yeah. And uh, I ended up staying out there for two weeks and having a blast. I can't, wait a second. So how old are you at that point? Uh, at that point, I'm about 22. 22, 22 years old. Kiss calls you. Was Kiss already successful? Oh, big time. Big time. And, and so they. Yeah, needed... I was going to replace Ace when they did, they were looking for a guy. And, and so, th- did you get into the makeup and? Uh... No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, you know what? I, honestly, you know, I respect Kiss a lot, but my music was more into a more blues oriented kind of thing, more right. organic. I was into like Zeppelin and Hendrix and right. You know, guys that played guitar and actually emoted through the instrument. So when they called you and said join the band, were you open to it or did you already? Look, say... I, like I said, I was searching to get a leg up, and I was in like five. Five bands at the same time. But how could you turn down Kiss? Here's a band that's making a ton of money. You hadn't really broken through. I, I imagine you didn't have a lot of money at that point. Oh, definitely not. When you turned down, you turned down Kiss. Well, basically, I walked into the edition and they were looking for a guy to like worship them. Yeah, and I didn't. That's Gene. I just wasn't that guy. You know right, what I mean? Right. So I'm so like, you didn't come on, let's jam, part. let's do yeah. something. And they right. want to do like, you know, you better know Black Diamond. I go, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like. <laughs> Can we just play so you guys can get a sense of what I'm doing? Because I'm sure I can play your music. You know? Right. And so did you... They have... got upset. You're kidding. Yeah, they got, they well, got a little that, upset. That seems very professional to me to say, let's see if we can bond here. Let's see if yeah, we can... Yeah, they got a little upset, but it was really funny because, like, fast forward a little bit. Yeah. Our first tour in Europe, we opened up for Kiss. Yeah. And we laughed about it a lot. <laughs> yeah. You know? So you went there for two weeks. Gene, I guess, is the big ego. Who you're not? You're not sucking his balls enough. You're just being a, a you. You're being rich. <laughs> no, they, you know they were both pretty cool to me, but I think they were like taken aback that I wasn't like so into them. You know, like I was just like. But to, to think about that in your life, let's say Bon Jovi had never worked out, you would have been kicking yourself in the head the rest of your life because joining Kiss would have made you a multimillionaire. I mean, what you are now, and it all worked out. But it does take a lot of balls. To turn down a band like Kiss and not sit there and suck their ass a little bit and get in the band <laughs> you know what, and Howard, make a fortune. It didn't seem authentic to me for wow. some reason. That's beautiful. But it's true, though. I, I love God, it that just about didn't you. seem authentic to me, man. I was like, as an artist, I was moving in a different direction already. Yeah, wouldn't it have killed you to play music that you really didn't care about? You know, all the guys in your band right now are looking at you like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> they would have taken the Kiss job. <laughs> they take the Kiss job in two seconds. <laughs> like, man, you must be fucking maniac or something. Let me at those balls. So when you go out to, to, to it was on Kiss's dime, you go out there for two, what, two weeks? Well, you know what happened? I was actually, uh, I used to be uh, uh, jamming with uh, Still S's own brother, Frank. Oh, Who? My gosh. Who Sylvester you know Stone's what? brother? No kidding, Frank. I used to like play with him every. So I was actually <laughs> staying at Frank. I was like at Sly's house actually. Wow, you know, 
And he wasn't there. Right. He Perfect. might not even know that, so he's going to kick my ass when he hears about <laughs> this. So do you tell girls, hey, this is my place, why don't you come Yeah, right. Over? I took his pictures down and put mine up. <laughs> And yeah. So you went out. But yeah, no, I was having a good time with some California girls out there, and I decided I picked up a couple of sessions. Right. So I decided to stay out there for a couple of weeks. Right. When you say you picked up a couple of sessions, you mean you were a session musician. You would go out there, and people would pay you to sit in with a band yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Guys I knew, you know, kind of hooked me up with some people, and I was lucky enough to stay out there, make a little bit of money so I could actually stay out there and get home. So when do you start taking guitar lessons? When you were in Bon Jovi? No, I was, uh, I, my first guitar lesson was actually, I was 52 years old. No kidding. And who can really teach you? I mean, you've, it, there's a teacher say to you, uh, look, Richie, what, what can I really teach you? You're, You're holding your hands the wrong way. No, check way. this out. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, I why would they a, fuck with what you do? I, wa I walked into this, uh, my favorite vintage guitar stop. Car, car shop in California and I, this guy was playing with his back towards me and he's playing acoustic guitar right. but he sounds like two guys what was he playing tell me what he was playing at I, that point. just some piece okay. you know this acoustic piece right but he sounded like two guys playing at the same time right so I kind of walked around in front of him I said what are you doing man yeah you got to teach me how to do this this is like sick you know I said I'll be back in 18 months I'm going on tour <laughs> but <Right>. when <laughs> I come back I'd love you to teach me. So he gave me his number. He happened to be a cat by the name of Lawrence Juber, who used to be in McCartney oh, and Wings. Right. But he was also now the, like, the acoustic guitar player of the year. Right. And he was working with all these different alternative tunings. So I started to work on him with those. So, uh, you know, now there's always more you could learn. That's the great thing about me. He wasn't opposed to teaching you and giving you his secrets, so to speak? No, not at all. Because I, I think it was more of a give and take. I also was teaching him a little bit. Right. And he was teaching me. When but honestly, it, it was though. something that was alien to me and I never did before. But when you say guitar lesson, you have to pay him to teach you, right? Sure. Yeah. So wh what does the guy charge Richard charge? Sambora for a guitar lesson? I mean, you know, I, Howard, if I, I don't see even, you, know, I, I don't even look. So it doesn't matter. I like this. Sign yeah, a check, be, you know. uh, Mr. Sambora, that'll be 50 grand for yeah, your no. lesson. <laughs> it ain't like that, you know? <laughs> right. he's, he's a good guy. So when you got into Bon Jovi, suddenly it's a... A new world for you. You're mm -hmm. not the front man. You're not the lead singer. So now that you have an album out where you're singing lead, yeah. it feels good to you, right? You can show people what you can do. It's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a whole different energy. You know, I give good band. Right. You know? And uh, I always was a team player. Is this like a band what I'm looking at? Are these guys in your band? Yeah, these guys are the guys I made the record with and in my band, yeah. Oh, no kidding. So in other words, this is not something where you just hired some musicians for the day where they're going to play with you. No, you know, the excellent thing about this record, mm -hmm. it happens so organically and from the writing process up and when we took it in the studio yeah we sounded like a band immediately right and we just started to roll and that's why i left all the jamming pieces on this record you know because i mean now people can get a chance to hear i mean like you know when we were kids we were growing up with zeppelin and hendrix and they were jamming on records right so people get to hear me play extended guitar solos did you go to john and say i'm doing a solo album and uh, did you say the rest of the bon jovi band look i'm gonna go do this thing do you have to get permission in a sense no I, you just gotta tell them you know we've always been supportive of our individual endeavors you know what is going on with bon jovi are they together dude not, I've been a busy boy this year. Check this out. Right. At the end of this record, I started writing with John for the new Bon Jovi record. The new Bon Jovi record's done. Oh, it's all finished. It's all finished because now I'm going on tour for the next three months. With Bon Jovi? No, with, with this, this band. record. Yeah, Richie Sambora band. And, and, uh, and so. And the Disgusting Rabbis. When you. The, <laughs> I love that name, by the way. Well, when you. Cock do, and the Doodle Doos, man. Is it hard for you to go on tour now with a new band because you're not playing to stadiums, you're not playing to bigger crowds like that? You have to play to guys, you know, you're starting in out clubs, in a sense, right? Yeah. No, you know, I'm playing great theaters, man. You are. All over the world. We put the show on sale actually before the record came out in Europe right and the tour sold out the first day in pre-sale oh no kidding yeah yeah so but but it's not a stadium setup like when you play no bon we're just playing cool theaters but you enjoy that absolutely no that's great you know I mean I don't take anything for granted I mean obviously every time you walk out in front of a stadium stage yeah I mean it blows your mind I don't care no matter how many times you do it if you take it for granted, you'd be an asshole. Let's face it. Do you think you uh, are blessed? I mean, like, like live a charmed life? I mean, every, starting from high school, being an athlete, being able to play guitar, teaching yourself how to play guitar, at a young age, getting into a super mega hit band like Bon Jovi. Absolutely. It's, it's, real, it's a blessed and life, right? And then all the women. And then, oh, yeah, I mean, my <laughs> God. Oh, you know, it, like, I mean, it's funny. You go, you know, I'm a kid from Woodbridge, New Jersey. Right. And yesterday, I went to see the Giants. I took the guys to see the Giants. And we walk in Giants Stadium, and I'm looking around, I'm going, 
going, man, I sold this mofo out like four times. Right. It still blows your mind. It's right? heavy. You know, it's heavy. You know, it's like, it's like guys like us, like me and you, you know, we actually did it. Right. It's pretty amazing when you've accomplished that. You sometimes like you pinch yourself because you know how many musicians who are great. Like that guy from Wings who's teaching you, who haven't been able to break through right. and make it in the business. There's that and, it factor. And isn't it almost defeating to put out an album now because of the way the music business is? It's almost impossible to sell records because every all music is exchanged for free almost. You're not going to make a lot of money with this record. Oh, absolutely not. It's right. not. I, I didn't do this for the money, you know? I mean... As a as an artist, you gotta kind of you gotta keep fresh. You gotta do these things. So basically, it's like you ex excavate inside and bring out all this stuff. And this record is about a lot of my life experience. And how do you? But how do you uh, decide which which song is going to go on a Bon Jovi album, which is going to be a solo? Album? Oh, you know what? Uh, there's not even any choice. When I write a record for myself. I'm the mouthpiece. I'll write a different lyric than John's ever going to sing. Is it nice to be able to write a song on your own without John's interference? I mean, uh, I'm sure... <laughs> is that what you call it? What is the process when you and John write a song? Do it's you... very, very simple. We sit down with an acoustic guitar and a piano and our two voices. We have a conversation right. about how we're feeling. You, you know, there's a big, big commonality between John and I. We grew Do up Do you in the like same... each other? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Be honest. I'm being honest. I feel you don't. I feel like when the... When the, when the I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, Richie. No, I've you known know you guys Howard? for a while. We really I, do. It's an anomaly, really. It is. We get along. We've always got along. You know, there was a little wonky period in the beginning of the 90s because we were... You know, everybody experiences fame and fortune right. at different speeds. Yes. And, you know, you add a little bit of lifestyle in there. Right. Which I was... Pr working pretty good, you know. Right. Uh, it gets confused, and then you know we had to kind of put Humpty what do you Dumpty specifically back together. Mean? What happened? Was it was it because you got you got into trouble with drinking and stuff? And some of, and some of your uh, new album deals with what some of your problems oh, were, right? Like you don't uh, make a secret about oh, it. Oh no, you know I think you know I set out to make an authentic record, right? You know because I believe there's this stigma, obviously, that you know people go rock star. Bon Jovi. They're going to think Richie's, you know, that kind of person. Right. And for that's show business, man. Yeah. You know, this record was an artistic record where I decided, you know, it's like when you did your movie. Yes. You know, you put all your stuff out there. Right. To people, man. And it felt good to you, right? Yes. And you know what? Now with my record, that's exactly what I'm doing. I mean, you wouldn't be the first rock star to have a problem with booze. I mean, uh, everybody uh, seems to go through some sort of drug related thing, except for John, right? You know, yeah. You know what? It's funny because I started out playing clubs and I was like 16 and a half. Right. And back then, it wasn't frowned upon. What, to drink? No, it was encouraged. Yeah, it was like yeah. an accoutrement of my business. Right. You know what I mean? So then all of a sudden, but I'll tell you what, it took me about 35 years for my demons to catch up with me. Yeah, so I'm a pretty I, resilient little bastard. I never saw you as a guy who drank a lot and stuff, so you probably drank in private, right? You know what? After a while, what happened was, yeah, I was definitely a, uh, a kind of a guy that always drank in my house. Never drank. I, I didn't even drink in restaurants anymore. Wow. Or I didn't drink around the band or or anywhere near a performance. That's when you know you have a problem, when you're drinking by yourself, right? When it's I not guess a social so. thing. I what, guess so. What were you drinking, wine? Yeah, I was drinking wine, and you know what? It was predominantly a stress reliever. Right, absolutely. That's, I mean, I was using it for a specific, different reason. So when did you realize you had a problem? You had to go into rehab. When did you realize You know, that? it was about five years ago. You said, hey, I'm doing this too much, and I'm doing it every night. Yeah, when I started getting clean, it was about five years ago. But I was doing it every night for about 30 years, so... Did you, know. you have interventions? Did anybody, you know, did the group get together and say, look, Richie? Yeah, a lot of people kind of said, hey, man, you know. But also what happened, I had broken my arm. Right. And I was doing painkillers, because check this uh, out. So I break my arm in my house. <laughs> I get Drinking. divorced. Right? You got it from Heather. Yeah, I got divorced from Heather. Right. Right? So I come home from one leg of the tour. I get into this new house. I've never been there before. My sister-in-law thinks she's doing me a solid. She puts this shitty bed, bath, and beyond mat in the bathroom. Right. <laughs> I wake up to take a piss one morning, and I just went, biffed. <laughs> and I, my shoulder went right into the jacuzzi, and oh. I broke my arm in three places. Oh, my God. Two weeks later, I have to play like 24 stadiums. With a broken arm? With a broken arm. Wow. So I hired all these sports docs, therapists, this, that, and the other thing. I said... There was $145 million on the table for this tour. Right. I said, I wasn't going to leave it out there. Whatever I had to do, I was going to do it. So the painkillers got in there, too. Now, now, are you wearing a cast while you're... You can. It's a shoulder. Oh, it's a shoulder. Right. You can't really do can't anything to that. 
So these guys teach you how to sort of hold the guitar so you don't completely Well, you know what? Up. I started going crazy. I started making these little guitars right. because I didn't have this kind of <laughs> lateral motion. <laughs> yeah. But so what I, one of my heroes was Albert Collins, a blues guy. Right. And he would hang his guitar off of this shoulder, and I found that I could play like this. Oh, wow. So you know what? I was 95%. Nobody ever knew it, really. And, and so you, and, and to get through the pain, you start taking what, like Oxycontin? Yeah, I, st- I took a lot of shit just to get through that tour, and it lasted about six months. And I was drinking because of the pain and getting through it for, per, you know, profusely. And when you but, mix the drinking with the Oxycontin, that's a fucking powerful cocktail. Very powerful Nothing cocktail. Nothing better than that. Oh, and you know what? <laughs> <laughs> if you ask me if I remember those months, I would say absolutely not. But, wow. but you know what? I was a hero. Got through the tour, and just like you know, all the other substance in my life, I figured this, I figured this one would just fall off. Right. No such luck. Yeah. No. I was very very naive to it. You know. Were you like, hey, this oxycotton is more addictive than anything ever? Anything. Really? Like in other words, you said, hey, and now I'm done with the pain. I'll stop the oxycotton, and then when you go to stop, it it actually hurts. Shaking like a leaf, man. Wow. And I'm an asshole. I think I got like Parkinson's. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know never what I mean? the could stuff, have, right? Couldn't be withdrawal. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm now, all freaking out. I don't know what's going on. So now do you have to go score Oxycontin? Like, because now you can no longer Are get you it. Doctor no, no, no. You know, <laughs> all right. you know what I did? I just, I just uh, detoxed. I went in, I checked in, and I just ah. detoxed for like seven days. And I went right back on the road. Is it almost impossible to do it on your own? Because Oxycontin, they say, is like hillbilly heroin. It's the most powerful. Well, you know, I think you could do it, but you got to do it under the supervision because guys like our age can have it a stroke. Right. If you just... Cut it off. Was Limbaugh in the detox with you? <laughs> <laughs> he was right next door climbing the walls, yeah. I heard a rumor that Lindsay Lohan was in rehab with you at one point. Did you bang her in rehab? <laughs> <laughs> or no interest? Uh, no. She was hot, man. Oh, yeah? She was hot. She was hot. Yeah, and I talked did... to her for, you know, I hung with her a little bit. <laughs> but, you, but you didn't put the moves on her. No, no, she's too young. Too young for you? Yeah. What is your cutoff on age? Uh, I try to, uh, 10 years older than my daughter. Oh, good, yeah. That's, that's a, always got to be. Isn't that a good rule? Too. That's a good rule. That's I think it's a good rule. I have to, to throw some back. And speaking of your daughter, she's got some huge career going in modeling, right? You know what? Actually, she just acted in her first movie. Right. Uh, this is 40 with Judd Apatow and Megan Fox. And, and how did that go? And she killed it. You saw the movie. I haven't seen it yet, but I talked to those guys. She killed it. So she has a career. And it was improv. I was like, really? and she's 14 and a half. She's only 14? 14 and a half. Oh, I thought she was she looks like she's 20. Wait till I show you a picture. Wow. wow. She's doing really, really great. I think Does she's she about like to Heather? sign with... Hmm? Does she look like Heather, her mom? Yeah, she definitely looks Yeah, that's a good look. Yeah. That's a very good I'm look. I'm in trouble, man. She has my gregarious personality yeah. and Heather's good looks. So. Oh, oh, that's boy. That's, uh, that's, that's a bad combination. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, oh. How are you going to keep that kid in line? I guess you can. You know what? All you can do is equip equip, equip them with the, the tools to take care of themselves. Because you know when the minute they're out of your sight, they're acting up. And, and so, uh, so now, so now you're clean and sober. Took you a couple of trips to rehab, Because right? when you get out, all of a sudden that oxycontin starts calling to you again. <laughs> the drinking, right? No, you know what? That never even came back into play. I forgot about it very quickly. Just actually. drinking. Yeah, it was a drinking thing. That did you think that you could take a couple of drinks and then deal with it? Of like course, that? you're going to try it. You always try that, and it don't work. It doesn't work. No, it, it always it increases. It never decreases. It, uh, you know what? It just doesn't work, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just doesn't work. So, you know, I've got to be honest with you. You know, I'm like you're healthier than I've been in my life. You look probably. really good. You do. Thank I you, say, You don't deserve to look this good with all the <laughs> shit you've been doing. <laughs> hey, we don't look He said age, he took That's his first right. guitar lesson at 52. I was like, well, how old are you? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is that keeps you young, too. That's right. Anytime you learn something new. And evolving like that, man, that just you know just keeps you young. Yeah, it does. So, so uh, you're feeling good about a new record, and you're clean and sober, which is uh, is he a awesome. teetotaler? He doesn't do anything. You, you don't do anything now. Like if, no, I go, if I go to dinner with you, are you ordering a club soda? I'm doing like Perrier and lime, you know, uh, non-alcoholic beer. Oh come on, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. awful. You'll have a few. We'll go out hey, to you know, I was listening to your show the other day the about wine. the Jewish men and they got to start drinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll go out to dinner. You could have a few glasses of wine. It'll be fine. <laughs> Imagine that. I would not want to be with you if you started drinking again. Everyone would blame me. No, you know what? And I was kind of a happy drunk anyway. Right. I just started to, you know, my life choices at that point were starting to get kind of blurred. So you think you're capable of never having another drink? Oh, absolutely. That's it. Yeah. It's done. I, you, Howard, it's I drank done. enough for about 100 guys. And did John ever come to you and say, listen, you got to stop drinking? Yeah. He, he laid that on you. Yeah. I mean, you know what? I had a lot of support. Did you tell him to fuck off? No. You didn't? No. No, I knew. I Listen, I kind of knew I needed to dry out. Wow. You know, and I, I didn't, uh, 
I didn't know if it was going to be forever, you know, but right. I knew I needed to just kind of just. Get right, my good life for you. So you're busy now. Are you worth $65 million personally? That's the figure I read on the internet, that you have $65 million. Take a, take a, uh, take a, you know, give or take a few shekels. That's nice, isn't it? That's really good. But wait a minute. In the divorce, you don't lose a lot of money? Hey, did Heather take you for a lot of money when you uh, got divorced, or did you have a prenup? As prenuptial. Prenuptial. <laughs> so you're safe. Thank God. Well, listen, Heather's got a lot of money. She's got her own bread, man. She's got money. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I was always drawn to, uh, you know, a lot of high-profile women, I think, because I, I think I really connect with people that are in the business, and they understand what I do, and I understand what they do. Right. And, uh, you know, that was that was one of those things. So are you making a statement now that you mostly bang people in the business, like, like high-profile? Profile broad, <laughs> right? Not anymore. <laughs> is that true? Is that like now you're? No, not... no, no, no. You know, hey, look, I'm single now, man. It's all good. Is, 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 so, so are you dating anybody right now? Are you? Yeah, dating? you know, I'm kind of dabbling around. Nobody, uh, nobody that's sticking. You know, I, it's been such a busy year for me. Right. But I, I've never done two albums in one. But you're not that busy. You can't get laid. I mean, come on. Oh, you got to sneak that in there, bro. Yeah. And Denise, he's not sticking with one. When Denise Richards came in here and she talks about you, she says you are a great lover. I mean, she was very highly complimentary. Like, like you really gave it to her. And that is a sexy woman. I oh, she ain't so bad herself, yeah. That's what I'm saying. She is a sexy fucking woman. Yes, she is. Denise. She always has been. You know, oh, it's, my it's, God. It's, it's very insatiable. And she's a good girl. She she's a good woman. She admits it. She says, I have to fuck like crazy. You know, she loves it. She loves to fuck. I mean, guys, what are we talking about here? Hey, is she nothing the, wrong with that, man. Is she the sexiest woman you've ever been with? Gotta be up there. Wow. It's got to be up there. So, so you guys got back together again, and now you recently broke up again. Mm -hmm, yeah. What, 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 what happened? What happened? Well, you know, there? I think that we were basically going in different directions, unfortunately. Like I said, this has been the busiest time of my life uh, between doing my record, writing and recording and all that stuff for the Bon Jovi record, and right. being a single dad. You know? How does that work for you, being a single dad? I, I mean, love it so much. You do? But 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 doesn't the kids, don't the kids usually kind of go off with the mother more? Like, it's hard for you to... No, see. you know, her and I have a very, very great relationship. I, you know, I don't know what happened to you when you got divorced from your kids, but right. when I got divorced, my relationship with my little girl got better. Right. You know, because, I mean, the time that she was spending with me, she was spending with me. Right. And you got to do stuff on your own. Oh, yeah, there you go. There's a picture of the two of you guys. Look at that. Very nice. Aww. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, look, at, look at you. And so and so you say things got better and are you still friends with Heather? Like can you go over there? I, I read that you actually go over there and have Thanksgiving and all these holidays. Absolutely. With you can. Oh yeah, no, we just uh, you know, at first it was uh, you know, anytime you get divorced at first there always there's that, you know, kind of period where you're like you don't like each other. Right. You know, because you're fighting about finances and this and that and the other thing, blah, right. blah, 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 blah. Who's so going to pay for this and who's going to pay little for little hangover that? on that thing goes on, you right. know. Right, But, uh, no, Heather and I, you know, knock on wood, are, are really great friends now. I don't care. Uh, Ava and Heather and I went to a wedding together about three weeks ago. That's fantastic. You know, we text each other. Heather's working again. What She's doing really doing? well. Actually, she texted me yesterday, and she's doing a, um, a thing on Scary Movie 5. Oh, no kidding. Where she plays the mom of the black swan, and it's funny as shit. Funny. I, I, have you ever gotten to the point post-divorce that you've had sex with Heather again since the divorce? Would you ever? Would the two of you ever go back there once <laughs> no, in a while? I don't just, think so. You don't think so? No. It can't happen. Can't I don't think so. Can't cross that line, huh? We can't cross Too much that water line. under the bridge, baby. <laughs> Too much. Yeah. Like, it's never been a night you're all hanging out, it feels good, your daughter's, you know, hanging out, the kid goes to sleep or goes you out with a friend. You forget you're not And all of a sudden you go, you know what, what the fuck? You know what? <laughs> Let's it, just go to bed. You're Heather Locklear, I'm Richie Sambora, why not? Why not? Let's I can't say the thought hasn't crossed my mind. Right, why but not? But no, you know what? I think, you know, you got to leave what's in the past in the past and you know, you don't want to start churning uh, up that thing again, man. I heard what came between you and Denise, between you and Denise, was that she was still in touch with Charlie Sheen. And Charlie's a big pain in the fucking ass. And you had said, look, man, I can't be with the chick if she's going to know, you know, hang out with Charlie because it's too fucking crazy, that whole scene. Nah. True or false? False. Really? You know Absolutely Charlie false. at all? Absolutely. Charlie and I are friends, man. Oh, you are? And we've always been friends. Me and him used to hang out in the old days when we both were crazy. Right, right. right. Oh, you did? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. You could man, hang yeah, with Charlie Yeah, he scared the hell out of me, man. I used to have to leave say. sometimes. You weren't, you weren't that crazy. I, I wasn't as crazy as him. Yeah. yeah, he's crazy. Yeah, but you know what? He's a really good guy in a good way. Right. You know what I mean? If you hang out with him, 
He's a real man's man. You talk about sports, you right. know, you hang out. Were you ever in in the home when he has all these women and the the, the parties the and goddesses. the hookers and the goddesses? You know, I never was. I always used to go out with him. I would like right. meet him somewhere. We'd go some parties, you know, go out to dinner, things like uh, that. You, you know, two must job. have been up to fucking shenanigans. Oh, it was huh? fantastic. <laughs> Unbelievable. Like the kind of shenanigans we did, you know, in the old days, too. Yeah, well. Me and I you. Mean, not, I never had shenanigans <laughs> like that. I mean, you know, I, what did I do? Nothing. Do you think Kiss is upset when they're listening this morning and they're going, man, we should have taken... No, I think they're quite well off. Yeah. Don't you they think... got more money than me, bro. Would you say that... Like you... a lot more money. Well, yeah, because they charge... They, they build caskets. Is there ever going to be a Bon Jovi casket? I, I mean, doubt that. When, when, when you, when... I mean, I'm a whore, right. but not that big. Not, they are the real whores of the, of the business, right? It's, it's unbelievably... They're, they're not ashamed at all of uh, t- taking every oh, dime. Oh, no, they're shameless, man. Sometimes you have to say to yourself, hey, I'll pass up on some merchandising, right? Exactly. You have to. Think of the, the arguments you would have gotten into with those guys had you joined KISS. What a different life it would have been. Oh, yeah. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. Remarkable. But let's get to the new single. So this is very personal, this song to you. What song are you going to be doing for us? Um, here's a song called Every Road Leads Home. And it seems to be the impact track that everybody is kind of going towards these days. Right. But interestingly enough, you know, I, I'm... I decided to go with an independent label, okay, which is interesting because the business is changing. Obviously, you right. know, obviously, social media and downloading is really what's going on, right? And and I also wanted to make the record I wanted to make artistically, right? And you know, obviously, there's going to be a bit of commerciality in it, but there's a lot of jamming in this. So you're getting the acoustic version of this stuff, but people are reacting to this track. Um, now, some have interpreted this track. Uh, Every road leads home. Home being Denise Richards' vagina. Oh my God! <laughs> that, that's true, Robin. Am I right, Richie, on that, or is that a, 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 a misconception? It was actually, uh, I was. It's actually me being on the road coming home to my daughter. Actually, oh, really, how yeah, boring! Yeah. I thought it was yeah. about Denise. You know, you got to tell me what she's like in bed. She's lovely. She she's talks amazing. up such a good fucking yeah. story here. What are you gonna I mean, do, man? I mean, I mean, you know, she's hot, and she's a freak. She she describes. Oh, she's blowing every. You know, she she describes the whole thing. It's she hey, loves look, anal. Man. She loves anal. She. Talks Oh, me. I just work here. I know. Do you? Are you into anal? I mean, giving it. Uh. All, right. All right. So this song that Richie's oh going to do. Giving. Giving, of course. Yes. All right. It hurts when they receive. Oh, my God. Right. I mean, if you would write a song about how you manage to last when you're in bed with Denise Richards and I blow off right in two seconds, I would listen to that song. That's another song you should write. All right. Listen, okay. Richie. Richie, so this song... Next time, before I write a song, Howard, I'm going to consult you first. Please do. So here's the song. Let's listen and see if we can understand what Richie's trying to say to us in this song. Yeah, no problem. It's called, uh, Every Road Leads Home to You. All right, right. here we go.
that beautiful song. that was beautiful beautiful i know right pretty good song hey? real good song i liked it i'm telling you man thank you robin i loved thank it i love it did you play that for your daughter oh yeah and did you say honey this is about you or you're just on saying Absolutely. it she loved it she loved it that's a beautiful thing for a father to write yeah. to his daughter especially yeah. a divorced father because heather can't write a song for her and you say look daddy's better than mommy Guess right well, you know hey there's that you know there's the thing between a father and a daughter right it's right it's very deep, special that, just a little deeper huh? yeah, that's great i tell you but you know what the thing about the song i mean what does heather do heather goes out and buys her a sweater you write a song for her you know what i'm saying <laughs> That, I love that right. song. I uh, love the it. The thing about this song, you know, it's like this whole album is interesting, you know, because I, I write stuff about me and what's happening in my life. Right. And I realize that it's everybody's stuff. That's it's actually right. universal. I mean, I think I've always been good about that and I've always been good like that. I mean, even living on a prayer. Right. Like I said, you know, it kind of was about, about us struggling, right. doing our thing, getting out of New Jersey and trying to make ends meet. But it became everybody's song and i think that uh, uh, a lot of this record i think people are going to relate to a lot because there's, you... a, there's there's it's an authentic human record and it's got a lot of fire to it and if you listen to the lyrics i think they're good stories is there anybody you like out there now any young kids coming up or are you just totally disillusioned with man what, you know what... no 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 i you know being from an independent label man i right. listen to a lot of new stuff that's really obscure like in silver sun pickups and fits into tantrums and, and you my like... morning jacket is really good i was listening to you still walk around and you put on headphones and listen to music and and try to sort of see what everyone's up to oh you know i am a avid record buyer. I buy at least three records a week. Who's your favorite guitar player? Who's your hero, guitar-wise? I had a bunch, man. I had, you know, Jimmy Page, Jimi Hendrix. Right. All the classics. Uh, Jeff Beck, Eric Clapton, who played on my first solo album. That's right. You know? Yeah, that's and pretty amazing, Jimmy right? Has came, Jimmy has come up, and I became, like, friends with my heroes, man. I hang out with Jimmy Page now. It's, like, serious. Do you? Cool. Where do you hang out at? His castle? In Lo No, in London, man. He's got an apartment in London. And you hang out. Do, What's do you, that like? Are you like? Are you uh, tongue tied around this guy? Like, I mean, I, you know, he makes it so you're not. He's such a gent. Do you go over there and play guitars, or do you sometimes? Just... Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say. He, what are you he talking actually come. He came up and jammed with me a couple times, and I'm actually gonna come ask him if he wants to come to London and play. Does he have 3D TV? <laughs> he must, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, what we do when we hang out. Yeah, what do you do? Because I, we go to concerts, right, and go out to dinner. Just the two of us. And do people freak out when you guys show it's up kinda together? It's kind of cool, man. Chicks are flying around, I'll tell you that. Is he still getting laid? I mean, is he doing his thing? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, man. Good he's good he, he looks great. He's feeling great. Jimmy um, Page, man. Look at you hanging I know, out isn't with that this heavy? guy. I, you know, I never think, who the hell does Jimmy Page hang out with? I never knew it was that you. with Richie. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm not good at hanging out with people. You were good at hanging out with me when we were living. Yeah, when I was living but we in never York. hung we had out. A good time. Like we, we take me over to Jimmy Page's apartment. Let's see what goes down. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fuck we with that guy. Listen to music, play a little guitar. You know what I mean? Just, just you know, that's, it's, it's well, what are you going to do while they're listening to music and play guitar? I'm getting one of those drums. You, what was that called again? <laughs> cajon. A cajon. I'm going to get a cajon okay. now. <laughs> okay. I love that. It sounded great, by the way. You guys sound great together. Look, I could talk to you all day, but. Uh, I'll let you out of here. Richie Sambora's new album, Aftermath of the Lowdown. I don't know what that means. I don't, it doesn't matter. Really. You want me to tell you? What does it mean? Okay. When you give somebody the lowdown, that's you, like giving somebody the truth. 
Yeah. And that's kind of like what I did on this record about my life and what was going on. There's always an aftermath. It may be good. It may be bad. So good to have you guys here today. Brother. Thank you for playing. And Richie, great seeing you. I've known you so many years, and I'm very happy Too for many you. years. Yeah. It won't be so long again, Howard. All right, good. Don't don't be a stranger. <laughs> That's right. It's been a long time. Next yeah, time right. I see you, be at uh, Jimmy Page's place. We're all going over there for the big <laughs> party. Yeah. Hey, why don't you guys put me on America Got Talent? I'd love to play. They uh, Would you? Yeah. The fucking it's over show's now. over. But next, yeah, next season. Bad, man. <laughs> I know, yeah. Green yeah. Day had a bunch of cool people on there. Yeah, yeah. Where were you? Who knew? I don't know. Where was I? Do you ever go over John's house for those Obama get togethers with those uh, fundraisers? <laughs> I haven't been yet. No. With Al Gore? <laughs> I haven't been over there. You haven't gotten political <laughs> yet? Well, you know, I, I campaign for Clinton. Yeah. And I campaign for Al. Right. And, uh,. You know, John's got the Obama thing kind of locked up. When he wants me to play, I'll probably go. Right, right. You'll be there. Absolutely. All right. Listen, uh, boys, thank you for doing this today. Very special morning because of uh, your music. Yeah. Thank you. I could have done another hour with you guys. That was that, oh, that, yeah, sounded, we fun, that sounded good. That sounded really good. Really Thanks. good. Thanks. Oh, thank you. So great to see you. Man. You look great. Yeah, you and you're good. sounding great. Oh, bro. That's a really good song. Hey, can I turn you on to a record? Yeah. If you want to come see me play, I'm playing October 23rd All right, I'm at try and come Best Buy. Oh, okay, Please great. be my guest. Yeah, I'd love to. Bring your old lady, bring your kid. All right, great. I'd love to do that. All right? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to really get you a record, you. though. All right, please. Thanks for having me. All right. It's a pleasure, brother. Richie, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, man. I heard you say in the studio just now during the break, yeah, you guys have known each other for 30 right. years. Yeah. So you go that far back with we Howard. Go, Howard and I go that far back. He was doing drive time. Five o'clock drive time radio, man, and uh, this is 1986 is the first time I was on the show. Wow. So it's like, you know, 27 years or something. What's been the constant about what you've appreciated about Howard for, for so many decades? You know what? Obviously, he's always exciting. You never know what he's going to pull out, but, but that's what I like, you know? I mean, and I think that, you know, he's really about rock and roll. And I live rock and roll, so there's a lot of commonality. So we always have a good time. And actually, when I, when I was living in New York, Howard and I would actually get together and go out to dinner sometime with our spouses. And we always had a great time. So I think we became friends after a while also. Different professions, but you share the same spirit. We share the same spirit, for sure. All right, good luck with the new album, Richie. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. All right, man. Now that uh, we've had some distance from the America's Got Talent experience, the uh, boys... Really? There's distance? Yeah, of course. There's at least a <laughs> few days. <laughs> uh, now that we have distance from the America's Got Talent thing, uh, Sal and Richard went out on the street to ask old ladies and anybody else he could find. Oh, what they... You know, you know he, he kind of tried to ID people who look like they might hate me. Uh-huh. He That's can a, tell by Well, yeah, you looking. can tell. You can look at somebody and know if they like me or not. Can't you? Kind of. I mean, let's face it. We can profile uh, Howard Stern fans. <laughs> so he wanted to see if I had won anyone over. How did you think Howard Stern did this year on America's Got Talent as a judge? I was surprised that he was pretty good. Did he win you over? No. No, no care for Howard. Would you like to see him come back next year or would you like to see him replaced? Replace him with an entertainer. So he didn't win you over at all? No. Hey, I'm an entertainer. I mean, maybe you. She did you say she was. He, you were pretty good. Yeah, but she didn't like me anyway. You can't have the job because she doesn't like you. She doesn't like anybody. I think, if I remember this one correctly. No. 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 Not really. But you still think he did good, though. Yeah, he did good, but I, you know, talk for somebody else. <laughs> good, but not good enough. <laughs> yeah. Your opinion? How do you think Howard did this year as a judge? I was quite surprised, and I really enjoyed him. I did enjoy him. I. It's fine if he comes back. 
Who do you think is a better judge on TV, Howard Stern or Britney Spears? Oh, I'll go with Howard. I don't like Britney either. I would say they're kind of equal. They were both crazy, so now they're both coming around. How about Howard Stern or <laughs> oh Simon God. Cowell? Who do you think would be a better judge? Uh, I'd take Simon because he's obnoxious. I kind of like Howard over, over, Simon. over Simon, yes. How about Howard Stern or Judge Judy? Oh, please. That big mouth. I get it. Which one? Which one? Judge Judy. I used to like. I don't like her anymore. So you think Howard's a better judge than Judge Judy? Yeah, I'll take, I'll take Howard over her. Wow. Howard over Judge Judy. Absolutely. Mm. And Howard or Paula Abdul, who's the better judge to you? I'll take Howard. She's annoying. Howard, I like Paula, but I think it's just time to move on to someone that's a little bit more opinionated. She's very emotional. Now, you know, Sharon... Not I- bad, though. I mean, I got that You're one doing lady. All right. I'm doing all right. I'm hanging in there. With the ladies. <laughs> that one lady's really, she just doesn't like anybody so far. That first one. Yeah. <clears throat> Osborne is leaving America's Got Talent. Who do you think should replace her next year? Oh, Pink. Betty White's great. Oh, yeah, Betty White would make oh, the show. No. Oh, no. Betty White. She could die sitting there next to me. <laughs> Betty White. How come on all these other shows you get to sit next to, like, like Nicole uh, Schwerzinger. Yeah, uh, let me sit next to Nicole Schwerzinger if they're going to replace Sharon. <laughs> let me take a look at that. Uh, I don't know. They asked a bunch of people. What do you think of Howard Stern, how he did as a judge on America's Got Talent this year? He's wild. He's so wild. He's no. good. good. He's good. Who do you think will be a better judge, Howard or Britney Spears on The X Factor? Howard. Howard. Why? Because I don't like her. <laughs> What about her? I don't think she has any talent. What about Howard or Simon Cowell? Oh, he's nasty. Simon Cowell is sort of kind of nasty, so Howard is a little nasty, too, but okay. I would prefer Howard, yes. No, you see? uh, Even to Simon, huh? Even to Simon himself. I'm moving up there. Maybe it's a good time to leave America's Got Talent. I don't think I can, you know. <laughs> go out on top. Go out on top. <laughs> you should see me at home wrestling with myself as I try to make my decision. Really? Yeah, well, you know. What are you doing? Have you made a list of the pros and the cons? Well, I kept a folder all year of, like, everything. Really, I did. Uh-huh. Like, you know, like the schedules and everything. So I could look at it and review it as I make my decision. You just can't feel whether you enjoyed it and want to continue. Can I tell you what I'm feeling? Okay. All right. I can feel. (laughs) The way I'm looking at it is... (laughs) I don't need a drum, but okay, if you want. (laughs) The way I'm looking at it is, like, yeah, I enjoyed the show. I liked being on a network television show. I liked doing something different out of my comfort zone. Uh, the actual work, working with Howie, Sharon, and Nick, I liked. Uh, I liked the idea of the show itself. You know that. I'm a fan of the show. I like all the variety rather than just the singing. Uh-huh. But the singing's cool, too. And uh, so all of that was pretty cool. I like that. And what I didn't like is that, you know, I had sort of reorganized our schedules so that we could have more time off. And even our our listeners were saying, like, hey, you take too much time off. But meanwhile, I didn't feel like I had any time off. (laughs) Because every single vacation we had, I went to work. But I was working on America's Got Talent. Well, I think it's interesting that you took extra work and are shocked (laughs) that it meant eating into your time off. Well, I knew that, but I didn't think it would be that much time because they had convinced me that it was only 30 days of work, but that's not true because it's like you've got to to get to these places. You've got – there's a whole buildup. You know, you got to be here. Uh, it's not like the the day I would do America's Got Talent, I had to go run around. Like, like I didn't get to go have a normal day. I would just sit around and wait, wait. for America's Got Talent. Yeah, and like you didn't want to do too much because you got to be on your game, the whole thing. So that's the part I don't like, our schedule. Because we're if we weren't on in the morning, it would be one thing. But we're I was up at 4 in the morning, and if I had to go do a taping tonight or something, it's just, it just wrecks me. So that's where I'm at. But then I keep thinking to myself, well, you know what? I built something this year. I, I started with the show, built a following with it. How can I leave now? 
And wasn't it fun? It, it was. I mean, some days it was. And some days it was like kind of a drag, but, you know, but mostly fun. You always look like you were having fun. Well, hey, that's my that's my gift. <laughs> I look like the life of the party. <laughs> Mr. Munt. Yes. Aside from Beth, <laughs> many would argue that you spend the most time by Howard's side. Mm. At AGT? Well, in general, between the show and now after his first year in AGT. I mean, you were, you were with him every step of the way, pretty much. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Having this type of inside access, knowledge, conversation, what's your prediction for another season, for a return to America's Got Talent? What do you think is going to happen? Um, it's hard to say because... <laughs> The schedule was pretty grueling. Right, and no one for him. Right, and you see that firsthand every day. Yeah, every morning. Yeah, yeah. and the mornings that he that he come to the radio station, uh, the weeks that we had to go away and travel for auditions to different cities. It, it was a lot. It was a lot on him. It was a lot on everybody who was involved. You know. So um, I don't know. I don't know what's going to be. And I, I, I'm sure it's not all about uh, whether uh, the scheduling is. It's, I'm sure it's got to do with all kinds of different things, whether he goes back or not. You know, it's just not one thing to decide whether he goes back or not. I'm sure. But on the the ruling schedule factor alone, what, what would that? What does that tell you in your mind? If you had a gun to your head, well. I know he loves doing it. I know he like be, uh, he loves being the judge thing. And, um, I don't know. I would say if I was to be asked percentage wise, I would say seventy five twenty five that he's going to do it. Thank you, Mr. Martin. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Seriously, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. You're welcome. Gary, I just spoke with Ronnie Mund about the possibility of Howard returning for a second season of America's Got Talent. Other than him, I mean, you spend the most time with Howard and you see the effects of this show and the toll it takes on him the most. What's your prediction? Um, I'm on the fence. That's not being politically correct. It's just, you know, I saw him be very tired at the end of the season. If it were the, in the middle of the season, I would have said, yeah, I'll probably resign for another year. By the end, he seemed exhausted, and I know he enjoyed himself, but I also think he might have wondered whether it was worth it or not. If you had to quantify it, would you, in a percentage, would you say 50-50? 50-50. I think we're going to be speaking to Bam Margera in about five minutes. About his home invasion? Yeah, he got his home got invaded, and <laughs> some chick started making out with him in his sleep. and then started was naked. She was naked. Naked and then fingering herself on the floor, but he called the police. While he called the police, he, that turned her on. He's calling nine one one. Oh she my god! I have to touch myself. She masturbated while <laughs> uh, while while uh, he called police. Robin's right. He he turned her on with that. Oh wait, here's Bam. We got to hear what's happening. All right. It's crazy, huh, Bam? <laughs> what up? Uh... Yeah, it, I've, I've seen a lot of bizarre things before, but this by far tops it big time. And I honestly never thought I'd be so scared of like a 24-year-old naked chick in my room. Wow. <laughs> you know, it's crazy, too, because I was thinking about you, you know, because you're on Jackass and I've seen you do outrageous things. I mean, like, you know, you guys will, you know, smack each other in the head. You'll beat each other. You'll break bones. You'll, you know. And the one thing that freaked you out was this naked chick. Well, I mean, the, the thing was, is that, um, I mean, it, it, first of all, she wa she wasn't forming any sentences right. Like, she wasn't making any sense at all. And, uh, and like, she was saying things like, uh, <laughs> um, the, the owl sent me from Jupiter when I asked who she was. And, like, <laughs> and, you, and you don't think that's hot? <laughs> I, I, I thought that she was capable of getting a knife from the kitchen and either stabbing me or my girlfriend. <laughs> you Do know? you think someone from Jackass was pre playing Pranking a prank you? on you? Like, like, did that thought occur to you that maybe the guy set this up? Where's the camera? Uh, actually, um, at, at, for one split second, I thought it was 
Uh, this my friend named David Lee Homo. Uh, he he does appearances uh, for me, and he was staying in my house at the time. So I thought that it was him playing a prank, like laying naked in my bed, like as a joke. But um, yeah, because I, you know a lot of guys. Like who was that guy you used to hang around with? The the really crazy. Okay. Novak? Novak. Yeah. Like, like you, you hang around with such crazy, wild people, and you, and you need to for your business. But, like, I, I wouldn't trust anything that was going on. I would think everything was weird, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, I, I woke up to someone, like, kissing me on the lips and on the neck. And uh, I, was just, I thought it was my girlfriend, so I'm like... Yo, quit it, man. I'm asleep. And like, we'll do that later. And then I see that she's dead asleep looking the other way. And oh. This silhouette of this this girl. And then, um... Do you think if your I, girlfriend... Do you think if your girlfriend wasn't with you, would you might have maybe banged her? <laughs> well, I mean, like, she's not a bad-looking girl. Like, she's in shape. But, I mean, like, she, she's been homeless and stuff. So she looks like... A, she had, like, really hairy armpits and, like... <laughs> This minging ass pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Did she smell? Actually, yeah, I could. And, and I, when I turned on the uh, the light, she said that um, you know the owl sent me from Jupiter, and uh, that sentence right there was like, "What nine one one right now?" Like when you say I, she wasn't bad looking, like give me like give me an example. Was she um, like who'd she look like? She looked like a uh, like a hippie girl that she, in shape. She had no boobs, um, and uh, you know she she looked kind of like a skater girl. You know, like one that didn't bathe too often. Did she look like uh, what's that singer's name? Uh, when you say skater girl, who's the girl who wrote Avril Lavigne? Avril, Avril Lavigne? Lavigne. Did she look like Avril Lavigne? Oh uh, no, she, she, uh, she's drop dead gorgeous now, uh, but. <laughs> um, no. Yeah, because if it was Avril Lavigne, I'd bang her. I don't care if she has a... What, what did you call her pussy? Was, the owl from Jupiter would have been fine. A fine sentence. To is that what she said? The, um, the, uh, an owl from Jupiter sent me? Yeah, and then... And then um, <laughs> There's oh, no owls on Jupiter, Robin. <laughs> and the, uh, another thing is, is that when she was kissing me um, on the lips... Uh, the very next day, I get this minging ass cold sore on my Ooh. lip. So I'm like, oh. this bitch just gave me fucking herpes, or or else I have a ma ma major stress blister from all this. <laughs> no, that sounds like she gave you something. All right, so oh. let's take me through this. This girl, you had never been, had you been contacted by her before? I knew of of uh, this girl who came from um, Florida somewhere who left her husband to. To come, she knocked on my mom's door from like a, um, with all of her bags packed and said, I'm here to marry Bam and move in. Yeah, that's and, all you uh, need is another wife. You just got rid of one. <laughs> <laughs> and he, well, my mom was like, oh, well, at the moment, he's a little busy in that category. That happened like almost a year ago. And then, um, right. so she, my mom called the cops and um, they took her to a, um, a homeless shelter because she had nowhere to go. Right. And then, um, so, so people around Westchester see her walking around, and she's pretty much known as the Bam's Florida stalker. Right. You know, so I, I, I never knew what she looked like. I just heard the stories. Of Are you her. allowed to call the police at that point? I guess not, because she really hasn't done anything wrong. Yeah, at that, I mean, at that point, yeah. But um, so, so, so um, my girlfriend takes her down as I'm on the phone with 911, and, and she's telling her all kinds of complete nonsense like like nothing that she said made any sense she would say like my parents invented goats and trailers and wow. then, um, but, but, but wait a second so so okay so the woman had been around town for like a year yeah it, it, she'd even gone to your mom's house you put her in a homeless shelter blah 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 yeah. so like how did she like so she must have broken into your house that night yeah and and like you don't have any kind of alarm or anything like that you don't live that lifestyle well, I have nine camera angles, but I mean, like, I have 14 acres and the whole place is fenced off. Hmm. It's a 10 foot fence that you have to, like, climb. It's, you know, it's hard to do, especially when you're naked, <laughs> you know? Right. How did she get in? Did, did you, you know? See, yeah, I mean, you have videotape. How did she get in? Like, like, um, what? she, um, I, I believe she. There's one part of the property where you can walk through the woods. 
but it's all marsh. So mm. you're up oh, to like God. a foot of mud if you want to <laughs> do it that way. And, uh, and it's pitch black. You can't see anything. Like, even I wouldn't be able to figure it out, and I live here. <laughs> I mean, this is a weird question, but is there any chance this girl would make a good judge on America's Got Talent if Sharon leaves? Because <laughs> she sounds great. So wait, so you're saying somehow she negotiated the woods in the nude because uh, did your cameras pick up the fact that she was nude when she broke in? Um, uh, actually, um, the guy who knows the password to check the footage is on a vacation, and I, I can't see. get a hold of him to look at it yet. Yeah, we got to get a hold of that. <laughs> yeah, we got to find out how she got in. And will you release yeah. that video when you get it? Yeah, and um, uh, so so when she figured out that I called the cops, ten police officers, state state troopers show up, and um, she's still rambling on about like the agonist from Montreal, which is a, a pretty good <laughs> death metal band <laughs> <laughs> that I like sent me from Galaxy Five Thousand, like just making up anything. And um, so when she saw the police cars coming in, she just ran. Into the woods naked, and um, <laughs> and uh, she absolutely had no clothes. And uh, apparently, people from Westchester who see her walking around know that she has a BMX bike. So I think that she drove from Westchester, which is seven miles uh, naked, to get wow. here. <laughs> How do you know she didn't like have clothes on and then get naked once she got in your house? Yeah, she might have walked through the mud. We, we, we tore this place apart and. <laughs> We couldn't find anything, and, and she didn't even know where her clothes was. She, like, either she's completely mentally ill or she was on, like, loads of acid or something. Well, let me get this straight. So, okay, so that night, so she somehow gets in. And by the way, who's your new girlfriend? Is she super hot like the, the ex-wife? Ex-wife, yeah. Yeah, big time. She's from uh, San Francisco. Um, uh, uh, she, yeah, she looks like Angelina Jolie, but oh. she's in the Itty Bitty Titty Committee. She you has could, no boobs. Your girlfriend? Yeah. Yeah, well, you got to bring her in here one time. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, we need to look her over if she looks like Angelina Jolie. Yeah. That's hot. So uh, <laughs> where'd you meet that one? Um, actually, at a CKY concert in Petaluma, which is um, uh, right near San Francisco. And uh, she was in, like, the front row, and we kept making eye contact. So finally, I just brought her up there, and then uh, we just connected real well, and then been keeping in touch ever since but how, uh, how old a girl is this she's uh 26 perfect nice yeah. so, so okay 20, so you, 27 now <laughs> you moved her in i guess huh yeah why not uh, um, and uh, um so <laughs> oh there she is yeah she does look like angelina jolie oh my goodness she wow. absolutely does yeah a little bit myla kunis too yeah, I can see that. Yeah, hey, man, that's fine. I'd move her right in, too. How long did it take you to make that decision to move her in? Well, we would see each other on and off when I would um, fly to L.A. to film Jackass or something like that. But, yeah. um, you know, after a, a little while, it's just like, all right, you're moving in. Yeah, you don't, <laughs> you don't want to leave her laying around somewhere, you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, so anyway, so 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 she's asleep. You're laying in bed. Suddenly, you feel someone making out with you. You think it's your girlfriend. She this this broad kisses you. And meanwhile, just from one kiss, you're saying you got a cold sore. That's unfucking believable. Yeah, like uh, it, who knows how long she was kissing you because you, you know she might have been. And who who knows how long she was standing there staring at her. Right. Oh, it's so <laughs> That's creepy. creepy. Oh yeah. my god. And so then when you when you finally stirred, you realize it wasn't your girlfriend because you looked over and you saw your girlfriend sleeping. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh my, I mean, that's got, your heart's got to be pounding a mile a minute. Yeah, it's like, it was, it, especially when it's like dark and you can't really see, like all I could see is a silhouette of a naked chick that I could not, that I never recognized before. Wow. And uh, it, it, it gets even better because, um, uh, you, you know, I said she's known as the Florida stalker. Well, um, a few of my friends do a radio show at a bar in town that she happened to show up to at the time. Hmm. So they're like, we want to interview you right now. And this was about two to three months ago. And um, they say, so you came here from Florida to marry Bam. And um, where are you even living right now? And she said, I live in a, I live in a tree fort. You know, and they just thought oh, she was nuts. <laughs> well, a tree fort. Well, well when the police came here they searched my entire property for almost seven hours and like um 
finally they find her in my treetop casino. So she did this interview three months ago, which means she's been fucking li- living at my house without anybody knowing it. What's, yeah. a, tre- what's a treetop casino? It's, uh, well, for Viva La Bam, we did this episode where we... Um, it, we built this tree tree fort in the woods, <laughs> so I, I hardly ever go down there. Right, and no, nobody really does. But um, she she's been sneaking in and and living there. But you call it the tree fort casino because what you guys would play cards and stuff there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, cool. I, I'd like to build one of those actually. And, and never go to it. Yeah, never, yeah. I mean, a just, woman, a naked woman yeah, living yeah, in yeah, it. No naked women are in my tree fort casino. <laughs> but 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 you know, like every guy's probably thinking, hey, that's kind of cool, but but it's not, man, because that's scary. I mean, she could have cut your dick off. Yeah, or something. you don't know what she could have done. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, uh, the most bizarre thing was just. Just the fact that you know she's not her sentences aren't making it. You know she would just say words. It, it, it was scary. So do you think that? So what's gonna? So she's in police custody right now, right? Yeah, and and uh, you know I feel bad for her because you know like they, they gave her like sexual sexual assault charges, stalking, right. trespassing, passing, breaking and entering, robbery, like wow, all this. Well, how can you rob anything with your butt ass naked? But, <laughs> but they pretty much gave her. Yeah, but dude, you, know, you got it. Listen, don't say you feel bad for her because her. this is a chick who's not going to give up. That's number one. Like, look at Letterman. He used to have some situation like that. That yeah. chick was not giving up under any circumstance. If the co- what the cops are trying to do is make enough charges, because you know, in our system, the cops charge you with a bunch of stuff, and then it gets all knocked down. So you want her to be in jail for a while, at least. Just to fucking straighten her out a little. Yeah, have her sentences or, or straightened just, out. Like uh, to get help. Like uh, help. I'd rather just have her get help. Like who's going to help her? Doctor. There may Phil? not be any help. There, there, I don't want to press charges or anything. No, I just dude. Want her to get oh. help or leave me alone or something. Dude, listen to me. Listen to me, Bam. You respect me, right? Yeah, big time. Okay. You've got to press charges. You have got to listen to me. Uh huh. If you don't, then th- this chick's going to be out. Yeah. You've got to, man. And and, like, and she'll be back at the tree for it. I mean, as crazy as your life is and how, yeah. you know, like you're one of those guys like, hey, man, everything's cool. This isn't cool. And the, the scariest thing is, is that now that I figured out that she's been living on my property for three months, you know how many times I'd be like alone at 3 a.m. Right. in my kitchen, like jerking off to internet porn? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. She could have been peeking in the window. Of course she was peeking in the window. She's got video of you jerking off. Have her sentences straightened out since uh, she's been, you know, in jail for a little while. Yeah, what's the report like? Is she act? Is she starting to talk normal, or is she still? Um, you know what? I, I don't think she ever really talks normal because even when she did that interview three months ago, she still wasn't making sense. That's, why that's what I'm talking about. That's why when she said I live with a tree for it, they just thought it was another nuts thing that she was... Right. Saying. Was there ever any point where you were like going to go, hey, let's do a threesome? Like, like did you... <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Like, here's a naked chick and your your hot girlfriend's standing there and... Uh, I mean, just the fact that we didn't know who she was, you know, that probably wouldn't have... Flew, but right. If it was a good friend you know, that we knew all about her, I guess it might be a possibility. But no, you got it. You got to press charges. I'm telling you, Bam. It's uh, that's dangerous stuff. Like, yeah, yeah I know. May not want to. I know it's funny, and she's a naked hot chick and all that stuff. But yeah, and and like I'm 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 terrified. I was so scared that like I I had to go to my neighbor Cresta's house to like hide and shit <laughs> right I mean you know, so, like, so I'm hiding at my own house because I'm terrified of where she is the, no, the police looked everywhere and, could, and just simply couldn't find her and uh I guess she found some like little because they looked in the tree fort and c- couldn't find anything and then finally when they double checked uh you know the, I guess she was covered in blankets or something oh yeah. up in the tree fort yeah, and, there, and and that thing is so, like, rotten at the moment that, like, there's not even stairs to get up there. So she has to go on my mini ramp and scale a 2 by 4 that's about 15 wow. feet long and 10 feet high. 
No wonder, no wonder she's in such good shape. Look what she's doing. Yeah. And I like Bam's house. It's like a my mini fort, my my mini ramp, my tree fort. I mean, <laughs> it's like a five year old's house. It's it's, it's cool. No, it's, I know. It's the, never, it's the Neverland Ranch without the kids. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> like she had to climb up my mini ramp to get to my tree fort. <laughs> <laughs> she scaled a two it. by four to the <laughs> mini ramp. It's so great. Did the other jackass guys call you to just say, "Hey, are you okay?" Um. It, yeah, I mean, I got just tons of text messages just like, just when I think that your life can't get any crazier, something like that. <laughs> uh, hey, was that your hot new girlfriend I heard in the background? Uh, yeah, she's here. Yeah? Should I say hello to her, you think? Are you going to stick with this one? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, hold on. I'll, I'll pass her on over. What's what, she uh, wearing? Okay. What's she wearing? Hmm. Um... She's she's pretty much well. She's been sleeping, but she knew I was going to be on here, so she's she's all out of it right now. She naked? <laughs> she's in like um, boy shorts. <laughs> oh, and that's it. Yeah, um, and then her um, her shirt. But like I said, she's in the itty bitty titty committee. So does that bother you? <laughs> Do you want to uh, check with big tits? No, no, I just like the I just like the busted balls, but uh, <laughs> no, uh, you know her, her yeah. personality and uh, I might break so, into her into your house to, just to get to her. <laughs> if you Never wake up you. and there's a naked Howard Stern, yeah, if you see me nude and, and uttering <laughs> words, <laughs> I like that the I like that the crazy chick goes. Uh, uh, it's an owl from Jupiter sent me. That's so original. <laughs> pretty creative I, I guess because she, <laughs> I never heard any kind of sentences that she was coming out with. <laughs> Is there any part of you that wants to incorporate her like into like the next Jackass movie? Like, like, like maybe she'd be the first chick like, to like, be in Jackass. You know what I mean? Like sometimes like professionally you go, hmm. Yeah, I know uh, she's insane, but like, like maybe we put so that. So are a, we? Yeah, we're insane. She's insane. It'll be great. But we probably have to have like a team of security um, next to her because nobody knows what she's capable of doing. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, she's the real jackass. <laughs> and actually, uh, you you just mentioned Novak. Uh, he, he 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 did a year in jail, and he he pretty much just got out. But oh, you're kidding. Yeah, and he was only supposed to do um, five months on the weekend. So he, he, would, he would just do weekends and get out. But the idiot comes out <laughs> and comes on my show on, on Sirius Radio, and, uh, and he goes, he goes, George W. Hill Correctional Facility is idiots because they have 30 of us pissing the line, and the last person they're looking at is me, so I take my buddy's clean piss out my ass and pour it in, and, oh. and there's somebody just forwarded it to the warden. So when he came on the next weekend, they're like, you idiot. We heard your radio show. You you piss right now, and then he he did, and it turned out to be hot. And they're like, "You're getting a year in prison right now." So he thought he was doing two days on the weekend. He wound up getting a whole year. If wow. you were a decent man, why wouldn't you set Novak up with that crazy chick who broke into your house? <laughs> it sounds like a man. <laughs> because I mean, it seems to me that owls from Jupiter have been affecting uh, Novak's life too. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, actually, uh, no. Novak's girlfriend is like super high and she's such a sweetheart and I don't know how you know a, a scumball like him could get a girl like that and, <laughs> and when he was doing a year in jail he calls me up dead serious and he's just like yo bam can you please go over and visit my girlfriend and bang her out please because if you don't then she's probably going to meet some goddamn frat boy and he's going to run around town bragging that he banged out my girl. So can you please go over and do it, please? <laughs> Did you help him out? Huh? Did you do it? <laughs> Well, I did one, so and then I said, um, he's like, so did you do it? I'm like, yes, Novak, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. What a crazy it, life. Like, it is weird, sick head. I can see that the, the logic of that, like, if you're going to spend a year in jail, you're going to get nervous that, you know, something might happen because so much time goes Let by. me understand like, something. So I'd rather have my best friend do it than some... some <laughs> bragging around town about it. <laughs> so, bam, you went over to the house where, where Novak's girlfriend was, and mm -hmm. you said, look, Novak asked me to bang you so that you won't get horny and bang some frat boy. Yeah, well, he, he talked to her about it before he called me. Oh. Oh, he did. And he straightened everything out. So you walk over. She and, knows yeah. what the deal is. And she knows the deal. 
She knows the deal. And you go in, and, like, does she just get naked and start kissing you right away? Um, well, there's a few drinks involved, I suppose. Right. And then <laughs> and then you, you fucked her. Yeah. How many times? Just once. And 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 uh, did she was she like I'm really glad you did this because I don't want to cheat on Novak. Now I won't be with a frat boy um, for I, a I while. I think it was more of Novak wanting to feel safe that at least somebody did it. <laughs> yeah, had you ever fooled around with her before? Um, I, if 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 we did, it was just like a, a drunken thing at a bar. You know? Right. And then and after you banged her, is there any emotional attachment, or did she say, "Geez, could you come back and do this again for me next week"? No, I mean. We're, we're, we're good friends, like super good friends, you know. But um, once I decided to bring Nikki out here, then you that know was it, all yeah. that changes. I see. So you only banged her that once. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wait. What a lifestyle. What's Novak gonna do now? Yeah. Who's gonna bang his girlfriend <laughs> while uh, he's in jail now? If fam can't well, do he's, it. he's out now. He's out. Oh, no he good. is. All right. Out. Yeah. Oh, so she hung yeah, in there he, with him. Oh he my told god. Told me that he was. Um, he, he had a roommate like this. This super thug dude that was like really intimidating and uh Novak had the top bunk and um one night uh his roommate his name was Streets and uh he hears from Novak's bunk he's like yo man are you jerking off up there and he's like uh, yeah he's like yo you can't be doing that in here man I feel a certain way about this like, <laughs> he didn't know which way he felt he just felt a certain way oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean Novak took his morals and threw him right out the window so he doesn't give a shit did just, Novak you know? have sex in prison with any dudes uh no but um yeah, I, I guess he, he did say it's like super hard to jerk off in there because you go to the showers, there's a bunch of dudes in there, so you can't do it there. Right. And the toilet you share with uh, your roommate. So, oh. I mean, there's never really a time to do it. Yeah, <laughs> so, I guess at night would be the only time. Said, Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Novak. Well, it sounds like he's on his way up the, up the ladder now that he's out of jail. <laughs> Things are only looking up for him. <laughs> what was he in jail for in the first place? Because he... Well, yeah, what was he in jail for? Um, he uh, he he forged the doctor's signature for like pills, like oh. uh, Xanax or something. I don't know. And he got we and he got a weekend sentence, and then it got increased because <laughs> he went on your radio show and told how he was cheating on I his was urine cheating test. Cheating on his drugs. Yeah, like what, oh my what kind god. of dipshit was? <laughs> oh my god! But doesn't he know that? Somebody could easily just forward it to the jail and oh. say that. <laughs> like he's fucking retarded. And like, does he get mad at himself for that, or he's just laughing about it? Um, I mean, he he just knows that like what he did was uh, his idiot fault for for saying that. You know, is he a dumb guy? I mean, like he seems like no, a great guy. The, the thing is, he's like the most street smart person ever. Like, right? You, you could put him in the worst part of like Baltimore, which is like the heroin capital of the world, and like you know, you could put him in the worst part of town, and he'll be able to talk his way out of everything. You know? Yeah. But, when it comes to like, you know, I guess book smart, so he, he's dumb as shit, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, man. Well, what a crazy life. Hey, by the way, you can check out Bam Margera at bammargera.com, M-A-R-G-E-R-A. Yeah. Uh, you working on a new movie? Um, at the moment, uh, you know how uh, Knoxville did that, um, he dresses as the old man and fucks with people? Yeah. yeah. In Jackass, well... There's going to be a, a coming up soon a whole movie about that, and um, I place I think at the end I play Spike Jones's um, uh, lover because he Spike Jones plays a girl, so I'm, I'm his wow. <laughs> I'm his lover who Knoxville wants to beat beat me up to win her back, and uh, he's doing a whole movie of that character of the old guy, huh? Yeah, it's, I it's, love that. It's still early in the works, but um, uh, other than that, I I hosted Punked and. Um, and they liked it so much that they want me to start do, doing it uh, full time now. Oh, cause oh that'd be good. He's doing. Um, he's too busy doing two and a half men, I guess. So yeah. there you go. There you go. I like that. And, I like. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's just so many like pilot type things happening that uh, there's not really any answers on what channel it's going to be on. But like me and Tony Hawk and Jason Ellis are all working on a thing called Radio Clash. Um, which is, 
you know, whatever we talk about on the radio, they film. The, just like if I talk about the Florida stalker, then they would reenact what happened, ah. you know? Right. Well, and, hey, uh, Jason's a good dude. I've had him on the show many yeah. times. I like him. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. It was, yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was you good never dude. had Hawk on there, though, huh? No, I guess not. I, I don't know why. Maybe we will. Wasn't yeah, it Hawk who York alerted York. us to... Tim's eating habits at the airport? Yeah, yeah, Hawk was. That, that, yeah, we got to get him on here. <laughs> Have like on? Hawk. Uh, Hawk. Tony. Yeah, yeah, I believe he's in uh, New York at the moment because I just saw him there two days ago. No, he's an owl from Jupiter, that guy. <laughs> 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 if you know what I mean. Uh, well, hey, listen, Bam, it's a fascinating story. Again, another just great headline in your life. Uh, be careful. Press charges if you want my advice. I, mean, I would close down the tree for it because yeah, she's yeah. coming back. You really say, I, I, oh, man, I just don't want to... Bam, listen to me. You're like a real good... She's already troubled. I, don't, I just don't want to trouble her anymore. Yeah, but know? bam, if you don't trouble, as you say, her anymore, and I know you're a good dude, and, like, you know, anything goes in your life, mm -hmm. you know, and you're tolerant of a lot of behaviors, but she sounds, like, so disturbed that... Yeah, the only way to get her help... Yeah. Is to press charges. You're actually helping her by pressing charges because, you know, maybe something good will come out of it. If you don't, she's just going to go right back up in the treehouse or whatever and yeah, just like stalk a, you. Like a cockroach. I, 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 feel like, I feel like it just seems like she's just too far gone to even have anybody analyze her to figure out what her problem is. That's why you want her locked up. Yeah, and you're not the person to figure that out. Right. Yeah, like, like, you know, when... You hear people at raves have or who are selling like acid. And they have like a massive vial, and then it breaks and soaks into their leg, and then they're nuts forever. <laughs> right. Like I think that probably happened to her. Yeah, I mean it's a sad story, but you can't get sucked into that sad story. You've got yeah. to really realize your own safety and, and and your girlfriends. And if that chick gets out, you better beef up security around there. Kevin, this woman says she wants to marry you. She might be dangerous to any other woman in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I think somebody diagnosed her, and she's, like, officially, like, bipolar, schizophrenic, all yeah. that. Yeah. Let me speak to that hot new girlfriend of yours. <laughs> all right, hold on. What's her name? Uh, Nikki. Nikki. Hello. Hey, baby. Hi, honey. How are you? No. What's your story? You're super hot. Oh, yeah? You know what I look like? <laughs> yeah, I just saw we a saw picture pictures. of you. You look like, uh, like, a little like Myla Kunis and uh, Angelina Jolie. You. Yeah, I like that. Wait, are you doing any kind of work, or are you just like living with Bam? Um, living here with Bam for right now, but and, um. And 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 my pagan biker buddy who who's guarding the, the property. Good. You need you need like fifty <laughs> you pagan need about biker 50, buddies. Fifty, yeah. And uh, and, and so your your whole thing is just having sex with Bam, right? Wait, what? Like your whole thing is just like being with Bam and you know pleasing him. Well, I mean, I I love him to death. Yeah. yeah. You have any aspirations? Don't love. I moved out here from San Francisco. Nice. What'd you do before? Huh? Like, what What'd do you, you like? Do before? What, what's your aspirations? I am a photographer, graphic designer, and I also pose for um, art naked, like, you no. know, figure modeling. No ah. kidding. How can yeah. I, uh, like, like a lot of Even us, like, don't no you draw, Howard? Yeah, well, I've got a sketch pad with a Mont Blanc <laughs> pen and stuff. I'm pretty much into sketching. Any chance I can hire you to uh, pose nude for me? Yeah, sure, why not? What does what a thing like that cost? Um, well, I got paid 200 for three hours. Oh, fuck. We'll give you four hundred for three hours. <laughs> you don't even have to, but you're gonna just throw it in. I'm doubling your your salary. Ah, four hundred for three hours. Yeah. Hey, why don't you come down here? I'll give you four hundred bucks, and uh, you want come me to mall for you. Yeah, I'll draw okay. you. I'd love to right, draw you. I would love then. to. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look. That's great. Four hundred bucks. You'll be naked for three hours. Oh, um. So, uh, Bam I here. Yeah. Was just saying that uh, you guys, do you guys still give away um, uh, boob implants? <laughs> what? <laughs> what kind of thing? No, um, a boob job. Boob oh, job. Oh, boob jobs. Oh, he's so Can I, do me a favor. Let me look you over when I'm drawing you. I, I, I got my suspicions are you don't need fake boobs. Like, you're probably hot and you. And Bam doesn't need you to win them. Yeah. <laughs> well, the good thing is, is that I do have a butt. Well, I gotta see. I gotta sketch you. Okay. Do you, do you mind if I position you when I sketch you? I have uh, various positions I like. 
I can work with that, yeah. yeah. I can do that. Probably all fours. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can do that. So how does that work? Like you come into my classroom and then you like disrobe in front of me. I take off my clothes, I have a robe, I go on stage and I do my thing, yeah. Yeah, and then however we want to pose you, we can pose you and we just draw you and stuff. Exactly. Fred, Who decides you on the pose? <laughs> uh, I'll do that with Fred. Sure, why not? Yeah, when you go to these classes, who decides on the pose? I do. Oh, oh. wow. Mm. What's your favorite pose? Mm, how about this? I will show you all of them when I go in there. Oh, great. Will you ever, like, spread completely open so I can draw the inside like of your vagina? Like a hustler pose? Yeah, like a hustler type deal? <laughs> With a leg up on a chair? That, yeah. You would do that? Yeah. Wow. Anus, um, and the anus spread as well? <laughs> oh, God, I don't know about that, no. Yeah, okay, that's cool. No. <laughs> no clear sphincter? <laughs> no, 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 nothing like that, no. <laughs> Don't forget, we're doubling your pay, so... Okay, so Ben here, he's going to afford you guys a photo that he took of me. Oh, good. Naked. Yeah, 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 let me see that. Hey, uh, Gary. Hi. Bam, who's address, who's address does Bam have? Are you talking Maybe to me? Maybe Gary's. Does Bam have our email? Do you have their email address? Uh, no, but I can get it from... Uh... Gary. Okay, here, how about this? I'll hand you over the phone. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We're not done yet. Who else oh, is going to okay. sketch? Well, I've got uh, that artist known as Fred Norris. Have you ever heard of him? <laughs> he'll be, he'll be, Fred Norris will be drawing you. He's a not, pretty famous artist. Not familiar with my work? Fred Norris? Yeah, he'll be doing you. I'll be doing no, you. I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You sound like a lot of fun. Yeah, a blast, I think. We got this artist here, J.D. Van Gogh, they call oh, yeah. him. He'll be drawing you, too. <laughs> J.D. Van Gogh. Right. Yeah, we'll all have berets on. It's going to be cool. <laughs> we'll paint. It's going to be awesome. Well, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. You in love with uh, with uh, Bam? Yes, I am. Do you want to marry him? I would love to be with him forever, yes. Wow. Wow. We're just a lot of people have tried. <laughs> Were you freaking out when that chick was in there? Oh, God, I've never experienced anything like that ever in my life. Can I tell you yeah, something? Yeah, that was rather strange, but... Um, you better you better sit him down and say, listen, dude, you've got to press charges because this yeah, girl... Yeah, because i got to be, be able to sleep. Because this girl could come and kill you if if she gets violent because she's jealous of you. Well, see, the thing is, is that she was not acting violent, which right. is a good thing. That's good. Um, she, uh, she also... Um, like, Bam doesn't want to press charges, but we did call the cops, and once we put this in the cops' hands, they take it from there, and since she did break the law and all that stuff, like, they're going to follow through with all the... No, know, they have to. She did do, yeah. Do you listen so, to I mean, the we're cops? we're not going to, you know, press any charges, because she wasn't... No, no, no. All right, well. You better um, talk that over. Um... And Bam was talking about getting a gun, um, but I can't allow that because I am a felon. Oh, oh you're a felon? What'd you do? <laughs> oh, God. What, what did you do that you're a felon? Um, I caught my boyfriend at the time cheating, and I pistol-whipped him. Whoa! Oh, that's a felony? <laughs> that's a felony. <laughs> How pissed? bad was it? You pistol-whipped a dude? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, he tackled me down on the ground while she walked out and... Oh, you caught him in the act. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you didn't shoot him. You just pistol whipped him. Yeah. What is pistol whipping exactly? Where you take the butt of the gun and you just kind of smack him in their face? Exactly. Oh, that's cool. Side Several times. <laughs> wow. I bet your band won't cheat on you. <laughs> How uh, well, you know, I think he had his uh, time for play. And what did he do? Yeah. Did he press charges against you? Uh, <laughs> it's kind of a long story. Maybe when I go in there and I'll model for you, I'll like explain it to you. Yeah, when you're like, naked, you can detail. explain that to me. <laughs> Why you did know, you? I mean, my uh, my dumbass decided to date somebody who was running a brothel. And there's a lot more of the story, but oh dear, I kind of don't want to go into it. Were you hooking? And no, 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 no. You no, weren't. No, hooking. I was the photographer. You were the photographer at a brothel. They take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want any pictures Who's of that. Uh, sir, would you like picture. to have your picture taken with your hooker? How do you no, become a photographer? No way in hell that I can do something like that. No way. How do you become a photographer at a brothel? Yeah. Um. Well, I met, obviously, I met this guy who um, 
I didn't know that he was running it uh, right. for a while. But then he found out that I was a photographer, and he said that he needed somebody to take some photos of these girls. I said, sure, why not? And so I did, and yeah. So how 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 long did you go away to jail for, for pistol whipping your boyfriend? <clears throat> um, <laughs> two and a half months in county. Did you do any chicks in there, or, you know? Oh, no, no, no. That's not your thing. Oh, God, no. Yeah. Were your parents upset um, that you pissed the whipped I guy? was on three years uh, felony probation. Oh. Yeah. So you're free of, and clear of that now? Yes. Yeah, but Bam can get oh, a gun. No Why can't Bam get a gun? But Just she can't have a I gun. I live here. Yeah. Oh, wow. You mean Bam can't have a gun because you live there? Exactly, yeah. Holy mackerel. What's happening to our rights, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> They're being uh, trampled on. Brain. Wow. So. Fair. Jeez, you're wild. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh. You yeah, are just I, you I are the, a lot. you're the whole package. Yeah, I wonder how this guy could go back to the brothel after you know a chick beat him up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I mean, and he, was he was he humiliated that you had beaten him up? Uh, well, I would imagine so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he looked pretty um, horrible with a huge lump on the side of his head. <laughs> Jeez, I can't wait to draw you. Wow. Wait, what was that? <laughs> Can't wait to draw this chick, Robin. I know. She's exciting. <laughs> yeah, I'm really going to do a good job. I'm a pretty oh, good... I'm excited, too. <laughs> yeah, I think you'll enjoy my sketch work. <laughs> yeah, yeah? Yeah, if you don't mind so looking like a stick actually, figure. Like, do you actually draw... Yeah, I sketch. You I do. do. Yeah. I mean, it's no big deal for me to sketch a nude woman. I mean, I've done it many mm. times. He's also a photographer. You I, can I am a photographer. Notes. You are a photographer? Yeah. Really? Shot a few covers. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Well, I would love to actually see some of your stuff too. Yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll take a few pictures while you're naked. Oh, and you have to also see uh, what Bam has been working on. He's been painting like a maniac. Oh, I bet. With, I bet with you in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I paint too. I mean, I've modeled for him a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. yeah tell him to bring those paintings. Bam's an artist. Sure. Yes, he is. Yeah, I guess when you have a girl who's willing to be naked all the time and pose for you, you become an artist. Why not? Well, you got to see the kind of stuff that he does. It's um, yeah, I want to see that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. With uh, the naked photo that he's going to send over of me, uh, he'll take some photos and um, you know of his art and all that. And How quick can I get that. that naked photo? Can we? Go, can we? Uh, look, can I put you guys on hold and then you can get on with Gary? We, we texted Bam the email address. Oh, okay. you did. So just tell Bam no, to check just, his text. Um, they just texted you the email address. Okay. Yeah, as many as he can send. As many as you can send. <laughs> Please. <laughs> oh God. So she could actually see her lips. Yeah. What'd you say? <laughs> yeah, we want to see her lips. Is that what he said? Here, I'll let you talk to him. Yeah, let me talk to him. I'll, I'll, I'll get to him. from okay. Jupiter said, what? <laughs> it was nice talking to you guys. Hey, nice talking to you. You seem, you seem very cool. <laughs> do, you want, do you want the Hustler version photos? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, my God. You, you got Playboy them. Playboy version. Uh, I, we'll take both, actually. Both versions. Playboy and Hustler. All right, fair enough. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna, I, I've uh, booked an appointment of Draw Her. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I'll come up and paint her, too. Yeah, Howard cool. is hiring, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we've got some uh, people here who are artists. We all want to paint her. Right on. Bring it on. All right, Bam. Yeah. All right, well, all right. hey, uh, listen, go to BamMargera.com, uh, M-A-R-G-E-R-A, and uh, check out what he's up to, and obviously a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> oh, and, and, and you also have to follow um, Eric underscore the cat at Twitter, because... Uh, He's my new cat, and he, he's getting loads of followers. I take photos of him uh, driving the Lamborghini and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Maybe they should lock the two of you up and let that girl out. <laughs> Other people's sentences aren't making sense. That's right. right. <laughs> I like that Bam met a girl that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> he's going to lock her up. All right, Bam, you continue to be great. And uh, we look forward to those pictures, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Yeah, right on. All right, later. Definitely later. Bye. He's got the tree house thing going. Yeah, I mean, who knew he had a tree fort for real that she could live in? He's so much fun, that guy. <laughs> I love his new girlfriend. Uh, w what's not to love? Gary, do we have those pictures yet? Not yet. Oh, come on. Now look at you all anxious. Calm down. <laughs> I feel like I'm... They, they, they're only going to get here as fast as he sends them. I feel like I'm, I'm uh, by the microwave waiting for the coffee to heat up in 30 <laughs> seconds. is too long. <laughs> what are you doing? You checking? 
Yeah, no, I keep checking. You keep refreshing your email? <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up. I keep hitting replication. <laughs> <laughs> I just hired her. I doubled her salary, so we're going to be painting. Get the easels out, the beret. We haven't Look, done that. Bam's even painting. She inspires people. Yeah. I haven't painted in a while. Right. Do you still have the equipment? Where is it? Yeah, we still have. We can get it out of the mothballs. It's <laughs> My paintings are pretty crude. It's at the museum. Fred's actually pretty good. He'll probably do a nice painting of her. Is your sketching better than your painting? Yeah. Maybe you ought to sketch while Fred paints. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. <laughs> but the painting takes a while. Yeah, I'll sketch and Fred will paint. Took me six weeks to do a Baba Booey. Yeah. Oh, it's a fabulous Baba Booey. <laughs> any, any luck there, Gar? Oh, I mean, he, it's not like he just hung up the phone. You know, oh. it's just like a minute oh. to get Yeah, through. God knows what Bam is doing. Yeah, but he should have been preparing while we were Come talking. On. He's not on the tight schedule we're on. Look, right. he's a guy who doesn't want to turn in the girl in the tree fort. He really is a jackass. <laughs> I love that she pistol whipped a dude, and he's afraid of the chick who broke into the house. Oh, that is such a funny story. <laughs> she's the greatest girl. She, of course she's dating Bam. She dated a guy who ran a brothel. Oh, and she had the greatest line, by the way. You know, you go, oh, is it Bam a little while? She goes, yeah, he had his fun. Like, it's all done now. Yeah, yeah, it's all over. <laughs> well, Bam she, had a better... pistol whips him. Yeah, Bam better pay heed to that story. Yeah. Still no pictures, huh? Look at these, about 50 guys around Gary's computer. Everybody's waiting. Mm. <laughs> That's a line. It looks like the Apple store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I guess I got to take a break. I was hoping and, for that. And wait. Yeah, I was hoping Get for Get some patience. Shit. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Oh. Don't tickle my ass with a feather. How do you know how Bam is with technology? He might have to wait for somebody. To no, he's like it. a young guy. He's uh, these, these kids today can text and do everything. <laughs> I got to get John Lieberman in here. What? He uncovered his story. Real quick, John, get in here because I got to do Robin's News and we got a big meeting today. So you got to hear this. So John uncovered a big story w w concerning Sal. Uh-huh. So here's how the mystery started, Howard. Right. Ronnie brought to my attention this morning that Sal has worn hats to work the past two days. Mm -hmm. And everyone asks me if I notice and I go, I never look at Sal. So, of course, we solve mysteries, we uncover things, so I confronted Sal about this. What we've learned is the reason that Sal is wearing caps to work is because his hair cannot be exposed to light anymore. What? And that is because <laughs> he is doing a hair treatment called iGrow, where idiot. 51 light sources, including 21 laser diodes and 30 LED lights, are strapped into a helmet on his head, shooting <laughs> these rays what into his hair it? follicles in hopes of growing them. Now, we've done well, a lot of research. All, he has a full head of hair. All it must be thinning to him because he was taking that... He's Pro an Pisa, asshole. Like, doesn't, he? doesn't he realize there's probably no scientific da data that supports that shooting light into your head is going to make your hair grow? I mean, what what is that? Well, it, funny you should ask. It's a low-level laser therapy, and it's hands-free. So you strap on this helmet. Don't it looks like a if, bike if, helmet. Don't you think if somebody came up with a way for hair to grow, it would be the guy would be a multi-billionaire? And and I'm not saying that this causes cancer, but, you know, aren't you a little afraid of shooting light into your head? All I know is that the contraption, oh, and Gary's it. Oh, bringing it in God. now. Whoa. It's a bicycle helmet. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no. oh, what a douche fucking bag he is. He's a it moron. It probably does nothing, Howard. He's it, the guy who, who <laughs> like, 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 you know, like snake oil salesman used right. to. He's Ralph Cramden. But he's not trying to make money off of this. No. no. He's just spending money he's on it. But this is great. You put this helmet on and what happens? Well, you put the helmet on and these 51 light sources beam into your hair follicles. <laughs> In addition, you have to put on different lotions. It's a whole regimen. But get this. What's he paying for that? Well... We've done some digging, and it turns out this company sent this to Tim Sabian a while ago, but Sal now, wanting to grow his hair, has now take it in, taken advantage of it. But here's but the Sal thing. Sal has hair. Well, look, Sal wants to be in movies. He wants to improve his teeth, <laughs> improve his hair. Talent. And here's what we've learned about how you actually have to store this helmet. <laughs> it is stored in a, it looks like a, a hard chrome suitcase 
underneath Sal's desk. And when you open it up, you have the helmet and all the accompanying lotions and powders, and it's a whole contraption. What does it cost? The co- it costs retail six ninety nine, six hundred ninety nine dollars. Oh. <laughs> and how do uh, you have to wear this every day, or? He looks How like many he hours? looks like he joined the gay roller derby with this guy. <laughs> Look at this. Thing. This company released this product in February of 2011, so it's a fairly new product. Yeah, I bet. But, but, but you know, listen, I don't know the company, and I'm not saying anybody's doing anything wrong. I'm not saying it's illegitimate. I'm not saying anything. But you know, it just seems to me if somebody really figured out a way to grow hair, it would be revolutionary. And uh, I don't know what this is, but this guy's fucking retarded. He'll do anything to himself. The, the thing is that your hair, it, it warns you during this treatment program that no. if your hair is exposed to light, strange things can happen. <laughs> Let's and like and, light. and this is why Sal is wearing the ball cap to work every day. You have to do it for a week. Oh, no light for a week hey, on your hair. I mean, Sal, come here. <laughs> I bet you if I told Sal, like, if you eat my shit, he'll grow he'll hair. grow hair, he would do it. He would do it. He'd do it anyway. <laughs> You're such a fucking asshole. I can't even believe it. You're like a moron. Why? Because I want my hair to look good. First of all, you have hair. Yeah. What are you worried about? Oh, yeah. oh light got on it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're stupid. Don't you think if somebody figured out a way to grow hair, that it would be it would be all it would be the front page of every newspaper for a year? Well, I might be the first poster child. You yeah, never okay. know. I mean, I, I, hey, you don't know what the, what this is. I don't, but it's worth did a you shot. Do any research? Do you know? No, Tim gave it to me. I said, "What the hell? I'll give it a shot." You don't care. Whatever someone gives you, you'll rub into your head. Pretty much. All right, good. Okay. Not any anything, but you know, I did research it. Like John no, is research. Well, I knew to put the baseball hat on and not to expose <laughs> it to light. I'm, I'm you know, I'm doing. But the I mean, what, what scientific d- evidence is it that they grow hair? Beats the shit out of me. Yeah, okay. It looks like a cool contraption, right. so I'm giving it a shot. See I mean, what, put it on your head. Let me do it a little bit. <laughs> Have you felt any overheating, Sal? Because it appears that it could overheat your head. Do you hear? <laughs> do you feel your head getting I have no warm? nerves in my brain, so I, hope I don't go, feel shit. I hope you go bald from it. <laughs> that would be really very cool. nice of you. Look, at, you've got such a lovely full head of hair. Why are you worrying? And these things massage in. <laughs> and they work the follicles. That's for people. Are you losing your hair? A little bit here and there. I, 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 I'm a little. I'm very self-conscious about it. I Just constantly leave your hair alone. Okay. You're such a douchebag. Stop. Funny, how funny that okay. Thing. You know what? I'll stop. <laughs> when are you going to do hey, your next treatment? You plug, you Tonight. Put that in? Yeah, yeah. You got to plug that in, Robin. We got to watch him do his treatment. Oh, that's hysterical. Yeah. Oh God. Sal, why were you angry when we asked you about? I wasn't you angry. Seen- like Ronnie was just speculating something was up because I was wearing. So I said, you know, again, I'm not plugging the product. I just want to do this on my own. I didn't want you to break my balls and call me the douchebag and asshole. You look that you like did. Lance. Arnold. Armstrong when he's riding oh, the bike there. <laughs> or, you know, like when Will I Am wears that, uh, like that thing on his. Oh head. Yeah, 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 and the black eyed peas. Yeah, black eyed peas. You look like the black eyed peas. I'm a black eyed idiot. All right. How long does the treatment take at night? Like an hour or two? Yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a long treatment. Well, it's worth it. Look at him. I fall asleep with it, and you know what? I can't hear my wife with this thing on, so it's pretty good. <laughs> <He's got headphones. laughs> it's fantastic. Right, right. Oh my oh, god. So, uh, I'm so giving funny. it a shot. I don't know. All right. Who the oh hell knows? My God. I don't know anything anymore. Yeah, all- yeah, do, you know what? But, you know, if you rub my shit all over you, you'll, you'll grow hair. <laughs> all right. Well, you're, you're, you're a genius. When well, Indians build houses from shit. Maybe it'll he... grow hair. You know, it is useful. What, Robin? <laughs> when did he start this and when will he see results? Never. What's that, Robin? <laughs> I said, when did you start and when do you expect to see results? Beats the shit out of me. Hey, hey seriously, for 500 bucks, I'll sell you my time-traveling sombrero <laughs> that I bought in Mexico. <laughs> what do you it think? couldn't look any stupider than that. <laughs> Sounds good. So you didn't pay for the treatment? You just like... Well, Tim threw it to me a, a year ago. Right. It's been sitting under my desk, and I <laughs> one day I was like, you know, I think my hair is starting to get a little thin. And I looked at this contraption and said, what the hell? I'll slap it on my head. You know? at, look, look, turn to your uh, to your left. <laughs> Your left. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Your other left. Yeah, so so get lost. Sign, <laughs> you cadaver. Ronnie had a big... First of all, I say, turn to your left, he turns to his right. <laughs> you finally turn to your left, and you see Ronnie's been holding an asshole sign over you for the entire... Well, on TV, that's my left, so... Yeah. It takes six months to see any results, according to the company's <laughs> website. Good. They're, so, they're out of town yeah. by the time you come to your so, so we'll do it before and after. We'll see what the hell happens. <laughs> All right. Good for uh, you, Sal. Thank Congratulations you. on your hair growth. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank All you. Right. Use your head, man. Really. Seriously. Really. I am with this helmet. Your, but just use your fucking head. All right. So maybe I'll bail on it. Yeah, maybe. 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 All right. Thanks, maybe. guys. I appreciate the, the, uh, the help. When, when I see more evidence that this really grows hair, I'll... 
Okay. I'll, I'll we should put it on like Scott the engineer, maybe. He's, yeah. You know. Yeah. See if he grows hair. I okay. guarantee he won't. <laughs> okay. okay. Sounds good. All right. All right. Thank you for uncovering that big story. Another mystery solved. Right. You might have saved. You might have just saved him a lot of aggravation. I saved your life. Yeah, you never know. I don't know anything about it. I'm just saying. And again, I don't know this company. I mean, you know, maybe they've unlocked the secret to growing hair. I mean, well, they I was, came out in February of 2011. Right. You think I think th- we would have heard about it if uh, it. You'd think so. Well, maybe people just don't know. You spend so much time prank calling Tradio and all these other well, this ridiculous is the, product peddling services. Why would here's you the next ever, item that's going up for sale. Why would you ever believe that a product like that works? It's such it reeks of a infomercial it's, it's, scam. It's because it was under my desk, it was for free. Tim was nice enough to lend it to me and I gave it a shot. What was the tipping point with your hair? I mean you Howard himself said you have a full head of hair. I mean what What's been going on lately that you're noticing? Are you thinking Nothing that's really. Right? I just like to have it a little... Th- I stopped the Apicia because it was from India and Howard called it a piece of shit. Uh, and, uh, and then I'm using a little roll game, but then the roll game really wasn't working for me. So I said, you know, let me give this thing... I just gave it a shot. It's called iGrow. You know, I'm looking to grow some hair. What the hell's the big deal? I overheard Will Murray say that, you know, you must have a death wish because... And I thought he made a great point. I mean, you're smoking electronic cigarettes... <laughs> Yeah, you're putting you know, non-regulated drugs into your system, like right. the Apicia and other various other drugs yeah. you've been yeah. ordering. The, you, now you're shooting like death rays into your hair. Listen to me. Look at Keith Richards. He smokes weed. He does heroin. He drinks all day. Look at all these guys. Guys still going every day. We have interviews with celebrities and stuff. They're doing tons of drugs. They're hurting their bodies. At least the drugs that I do are trying to improve my body. There's nothing wrong with trying to better yourself. I am using this helmet on my head to try to better myself. Like John said, I'm in the movie industry now. I do movies now. I got big things in the works. I just finished Jersey's Shore Massacre. It's huge. Stars Richard Christie. Stars Bigfoot. You can plug this into your car as well. I mean, it's ridiculous. Dude, what are you thinking? You where does this self-consciousness come from? I don't know. That's a good question. I think I have to go see a therapist to find out. <laughs> you know? No, but has, your, has your wife been saying anything to you about your hair thinning out? Has she made you feel I could like- come home with a ski mask and she wouldn't look at me twice. She doesn't reckon. When I had my beard, I had it on for three weeks. I said to her at the dinner table, I go, so what do you think? She goes, what? I go, my beard. She goes, oh, I didn't notice. So you think she, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't notice many things. So you're not attempting to like impress her or do anything No, it's for myself. Would you be upset if you were losing your hair? Yes, I would, but I'd be very, very uh, skeptical about a product such as this. Yeah, well, hey, you know. Show me, show me how, how this is kept under your desk. They, they kept alluding to the fact that there's a, there's a whole kit, a whole case. Oh, there's a whole thing over here. You got the, uh, you got the remote control. You have. Can you just turn it down for one more? Thanks, sir. You got this here, you have your remote control, you have the helmet, it goes into the special box. Then you have your eye grow lotions, you have your daily shampoo, you have your conditioners. So, uh... Let me, let me see that case again, if you don't mind. You have the case here. Where's the top? You have this here, and then, you know... Nice, sturdy, protective case. Even Benji says that it's not a bad idea. Benji probably agrees with me. Why not give it a shot? Well, I would, I would look, I would read it up about it, but if you do get rid of it, let me know. All right. Because I'll, I'll read into it and stuff. Okay. What's the name of the... Eyebrows. I'll look at... Uh, is it... Do you know what, what what's in the shampoo? Stuff? Beats the shit out of me. They don't, they don't have ingredients. I don't even bother reading it. <laughs> You know me. I, I'll, I'll look it up. Man. I read a few uh, testimonials. Because that thing with the brush supposedly did have some research. Yeah, I've seen that too. I was going to buy the brush. The brush was like 200 bucks. I've heard of that for years, that if you use an electric like brush... Well, it just sounds it, like it's the same kind of... It probably is. Smoking electric cigarettes. But um, it only use, makes I'm, the hair you have I'm using electric contraptions on my head. Hair, you know, people have pacemakers. Some, some people, you know, that's an electric contraption for your heart. Yeah. No, I mean, there is. Something yeah. You, you know, you heard of RoboCop? I'm RoboCell. Gonna have robo hair, I got robo cigarettes. What the hell? So well, like you know the, it'll have a robo cock. So this is like the uh, double play carcinogen thing going on here. Like sure, absolutely. Double your cancer chances. <laughs> can, can you smoke that with the helmet on, please? That's what I do at night. I put on the helmet, I get the rays going in there. So I sit back. This. Uh, 
Electro Man, right here. Great lungs, great head of hair. Who's better than me? Keep laughing, everybody, all you bald idiots out there. Keep smoking your cigarettes with your yellow fingers and your stinky breath and your bald-headed, disgusting looks. Look at me. Electric cigarette. New head of hair. I'm going to get the last laugh, pal. Stern fans, welcome to Find Time, the show where you, the fans, get the opportunity to ask questions and interact with your favorite Stern Show staffers, Wack Packers, and celebrity superfans. I'm your host, Rachel Fine. Now, my guest today is one of the hardest working executive producers in the history of radio. He's very well read and continuously improving his education. He is a proud former Marine who served our country in the first Gulf War, and he has run for city council. He is often the target of Ned's song parodies, and he was once arrested for a live on air stunt in which a pig was slaughtered. He has a history in Muay Thai, meaning that he trained for a couple months and then did his first fight in which he was TKO'd in 39 seconds. Howard once called him one of the best in the business. Please welcome from Bubba the Love Sponge Show, Brent Hatley. Thanks for joining us, friends. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Outstanding. It's good Outst to see you. It's, it's good to see you. It's an honor to be on your show. You well, guys do a great job. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you here. We had lots of questions come in, and I'm excited to ask. Sure. Fantastic. First one comes from at Kovac8. At Kovac8 asks... Who are you endorsing for president of the U.S. and why? Um, that's easy. Ron Paul. Um, I've been a longtime Ron Paul supporter um, because he's the only one that is truly anti-war because uh, you don't really understand how brutal war is until you go. Yeah. Um, Ron Paul was a surgeon during Vietnam, and I think he understands why he's anti-war and why he's not for interfering in other countries' business, number one. Uh, number two, he wants to legalize marijuana. So what else do you want from a presidential candidate? Uh, I don't understand how he's not winning, but uh, that's that's my endorsement is Ron Paul. Excellent. Next question comes from at Cindy23. Cindy asks, has there ever been a moment on the show where you said to yourself, okay, we really screwed up this time and we will be in a lot of trouble? <sighs> yes. Um, I think I kind of got that feeling the day when you talk about the hog incident. I kind of got the feeling that day. Matter of fact, I was the one that was outside. I was on the cell phone reporting it. And I didn't really, like while I was in the moment, get that feeling, but afterwards, like, mm -hmm. because we were in a big building with salespeople and human resources and like corporate America, and the reaction of some of the people in the building, I was like, mm, this is gonna be trouble. I didn't know it was gonna be as much trouble, but I thought it was gonna be some trouble. You felt it coming. Yeah. Do you regret it now looking back? Of course, yeah. I don't think we should ever do that again. Um, but uh, on the brighter side, um, we were acquitted. And our show um, has never been, not been number one since we did that. So it had, it had some good upside to it as well, but we just wouldn't do it again. Gotcha. Next question comes from Martin W. Martin asks, have you ever considered a serious political run? Yes, I just ran for city council in the city of St. Petersburg in District 3, which is where I live. Um, and in three years, I'm going to run again. And this first time was really, I knew I wasn't going to win. I was running against a longtime incumbent, but he's out. He's termed out and it'll be an open seat in the next term. But I needed to run this last time just to get the feel of how the political process works. And I did learn, I learned a lot about how the political process works and how to get elected. So I think 
I will succeed when it's an open seat. And will you be running on the legalized marijuana ticket? Uh, well, see, that's not in the purview of city council. <laughs> um, if it was in the purview of city council, yeah, that would be yeah. that would be my position. But my position right now is um, we have red light cameras in St. Pete, and you get a ticket <laughs> before you get a chance to even you know argue your case in front of a judge, and you don't get your um, Sixth Amendment right to cross examine your accuser because it's a camera. Right. So my my thing is would be getting rid of red light cameras. I think that's a step towards European socialism when you start putting cameras on every corner. So. My big thing would be more freedom for everybody and no dogs chained up in the yard. That's, oh, I that's, love it. That's one of the ordinances I would make is you cannot chain your dog to a tree in Florida outside and just leave it in the yard. I think the people need to vote for him. <laughs> this is an excellent, excellent platform. Next question is from Angelo Valences. He asks, what is the most bizarre setup you ever had to prepare for regarding an on-air bit? Um, it'd have to be the rat milkshake. Um, <laughs> he's holding the rat by the tail and it's circling over the blender. This is a dead rat. This is as dead as it gets. I swear to God. This is bonafide, man. I swear to God. This is the nastiest rat I've ever seen. I swear to God. I am going to puke. Now, you're going to they're going to blend it. I will puke. I will puke. I swear to God, I'll puke. I had to go out. There's actually a place in Florida, believe it or not, called the Rat Farm. And I had to go see this redneck named Buzzy. Awesome. And what he would do is he gave me, you know, they farm so many rats, a certain amount of them just die. Just because. So he'd give me the rats that had just died of natural causes and I'd have to go pick up the rats from the rat farm to come back <laughs> to be able to do rat milkshakes on the air. So that's the most bizarre by far. Yeah. Uh, amongst many bizarre things that we've done. <laughs> um, that was the most bizarre for sure. That sounds like it. Next question is from Eric P. Eric asks, are you still into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? I, I love it. I would love to do it. I just, I'm out of time. Um, we do two shows a day. Um, plus I do a sports show every other week. And then every Friday I do a talk show on serial killers. So <laughs> I'm really, really busy and um, I wish I could train more. Uh, I may take some private lessons. Rob Kahn was talking to me about coming down and doing some private lessons a couple times a week. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Right now, um, for those who are listening, I'm just, I'm just Hoyce has Brent in a back triangle, and he's squeezing the life out of Brent. But I still love Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It's it's great exercise. It's a great lifestyle. It's a healthy lifestyle. That's what I like about it the most. Yeah. from Hamburg asks, would you consider Bubba a close friend and do you hang out in private? Yes, uh, he is a close friend. Um, since he bought his racetrack, I haven't been able to hang out hang out with him much because he's it's a bit it's a business that racetrack. It's a good business because it's a it's a good, you know, for what they pay for their entertainment dollar. They get a lot for it, but Bubba physically has to be there to run the races. So, I don't see him as much as I used to, but you know, if the racetrack makes him happy which it really, really does. You can see that he's much happier now owning a racetrack. Um, I think that uh, that's a good point. Sophia M. asks, if you were caught sleeping on the job, what would Bubba do to you? Bubba would put me on the torture rack and shock my balls to no end if I was caught sleeping on the job. You see, the difference is, is I've got a glass window where Bubba can see right in mm -hmm. and look at me at any time of the day. Bubba can see what I'm doing. So I really couldn't sleep on the job without him noticing. And having a torture rack to electrocute your nuts is good motivation to stay awake. Yeah, yeah. Got and it. Plus, you got to stay awake to make sure you're hearing everything that Bubba's saying on the air. Yeah. <laughs> because you can't get caught, you know, with a reporter from the uh, newspaper calling, hey, hey, uh, did Bubba say just say this, this, and this? You have to know exactly what he just said. So no chances for me to sleep on the job. Gotcha. At Dave Lampert 28 asks, what is the worst thing you have ever done to piss Bubba off and how did he react? Uh, it's going to sound lame, but it was kind of big at the time, is we were in Jacksonville one time to do a broadcast, and this was before the days of GPS, it was in 02, so we really didn't have GPS. So I had map quested from the hotel to the radio studio that we had never been to, but I, we got all kinds of lost and we walked into the door to the radio station at 6 a.m., so Bubba freaked out. I mean, he was really, really... That's the maddest I've ever seen him. Because um, you know that feeling of being lost yeah, is bad anyway. It's awful. <laughs> and being lost and knowing that you have a show to do and no time to do any prep, that was... He was furious about that. So that was that was the worst. But now we got GPS, so we don't get lost anymore. Excellent. Next question is from Perry R. Perry asks, Who is better on the radio, Howard or Bubba, and what does each bring to the table? 
I think I'm th- see that's not for me the way I listen to radio. That's not really fair to compare um, because they both do different things. I mean, it's, it's it's all relative. Like asking somebody who who's your favorite band. I like different bands for different reasons. I like them both for different reasons. Howard is these days a lot more calm and paced and and very deliberate. When I first started listening to Howard in the early '90s, he was all kinds of pissed off. And that's when I really became a fan of Howard because he would just pre- pe- bring people in machine gun and just mow them down. Um, Bubba, I like on the air. I like on the air because you never quite know. Like I, like sitting in the in the chair producing the show for the full four, four hours. Honestly, I'm my stomach is in knots because I just don't know what he's gonna do. And that's the thing about Bubba is you just don't know where he's gonna go with something. And that's they're just different like that. Howard's very deliberate and he kind of knows where he's going to go with things and Bubba's like a bull in a china shop so they're different um, and you can't really say one's better than the other it, it's all relative and I, I've got a lot of respect for Phil Hendry too I mean he's I'm a huge okay. I'm a huge fan of his but they all three do different things and I think that just like music you've got to appreciate each air personality for what they do absolutely uh, next question comes from at Zuba. Zuba asks, if you had the chance to take over producing Howard's show, would you leave Bubba? <laughs> That's a tough question. That, is, that really is because um, I got a lot of respect for Gary. Gary's a good friend of mine. I, I love Gary. <laughs> I really do. And everybody that works at Howard's show does a great job. And they've all been, been fantastic. Just great to me. Um, that would, uh, gosh, it would be tough for me to, to live in New York City. It would. Um, we have a lot of room here in Florida, <laughs> and uh, and Bubba kind of leaves me to my to be more a little bit more autonomous. Um, so I don't know. I, it, it would depend. Bubba Bubba's been good to me, so it'd be hard to leave Bubba after he's been so loyal to me after all, all these years. But Howard's also been great to me as well. <laughs> so um, I would do it if Bubba didn't have a show anymore. Fair enough. And, and Gary was not working there. Yeah, I would never take Gary's job. I'd never step on Gary's toes. Gary's a great guy. He really is. People give Gary a hard time. but And I know it's fun to goof on Gary, but Gary, um, deep down, is, is awesome. I love Gary. Awesome. I want to thank Fred for taking the time to answer the questions that you, the fans, submitted. Keep sending your questions in. You can tweet them. You can Facebook them. You can email them. You can even send a video submission. Remember, this is your show, so don't screw it up. Until next time, I'm Rachel Fine, and I hope you had a fine time. I had a fine time with you, sir. Thank you. That's fantastic. (laughs) Enlightening. In our email, Howard uh, Howard grilling JD on the air equals awesome. There's nothing better when Howard questions JD on his personal life, girls, his apartment, video games, anything. It's always awesome radio. Can you please do this every time you're on the air? A lot of negative comments about uh, Scott DePace, about his uh, comments on Matt Taibbi's Rolling Stone article. Does Scott DePace really expect we listeners to believe that Howard doesn't understand Matt Taibbi's Rolling Stone article? Yeah, I was listening to Scott DePace on the wrap-up show. It's so insulting. It's like, he he probably thinks I don't have a, a reading comprehension of any kind. Dude, it's a terribly complex article. Terribly oh, complex. Oh, too complex for Howard. I think I got There's it. There's gaping holes in it. You know, it, it, uh, but believe it or not, Scott, I managed to get through college and, and read, uh, so I, I, I have a feeling I could understand Matt Taibbi's article. It wasn't that complicated. It was complicated for you. You can understand what he wrote, but there's, there's, there's things missing. 
there are things missing. What happens to the capital that's given to the company to buy it out? Well, that money doesn't disappear. No, the company has to pay it back. Oh, yeah, they have to pay it back. But And then they're in debt. What the fuck part of that don't you understand? That's what a leverage buyout is. The money doesn't disappear. And the management the fees goes. are tacked on to the to to to, to uh, pay off Bain Capital's management team that bankrupted them in the first place. Right, Look, I'm not going to go through this again. You don't listen, dude. You, you, you're so mistrustful of anything that doesn't fit into your limited s- scope did, of the world. Did you read the article? I Open your mouth. Mo- no. Of course not. I haven't. I haven't seen it. All right. Well, it's up there. When did you post it? Last night, about six o'clock. Well, I didn't see it, but I'll look for it today. I'm sure it's retarded. But I will read it. I have an open mind. I'm trying to learn. You're not. You're just trying to defend some weird party that you're a part of. I read the Taibbi article. Yeah, good. And he saw the gaping holes that you wouldn't know about. No, it was too complex. They were glaringly obvious. He said, uh, Howard, he said yesterday, you couldn't possibly understand the complexities of the stock market. But he does. He does. I said, none of us here understand investing. Let me go listen to what you said. (laughs) Let's see what you said. Here we go. Because we're probably not going to understand this either. You're so fucking smart. With that, what what education was that? What? Glassboro, Glassboro State. State. That Glassboro State. Did very well there. Guys, are you doing that in there or am I? Holy mackerel. What's I can't happening even, in front of you? I want to get to Gary Page 1 and the thing just floats. All right, let's see. Scott DePace and what he feels. This is a tough time of year. Once election <laughs> season comes in and these guys start with their liberal bullshit, it drives me nuts. You know, the media starts giving... I'm not a liberal. I just read stuff and make an opinion. I don't go into anything belonging to a party like you. I listen to the candidate. Jesse Ventura put put out an excellent uh, thought. There shouldn't, there shouldn't even be parties so that you had to examine the man and what he stood for. You know how many people wouldn't know who to vote for if it wasn't for the party? They just do whatever the party is. It's like a gang. It's not what I do. When you're in the gang, sure it is. When's the last time you voted for a Democrat? Locally, I, I have. I doubt it. You're I just have. saying that now. Right. I, I When's the last the time you voted show. for I would vote against uh, Bloomberg if I could, if I was a New York resident. Yeah, but you're not. When's the last time you voted against a president? Oh, president never. Who was a Republican. Because there are things that... And I then ask me how many times I voted Republican in the presidential uh, elections. No, many times. Hard, uh, the social issues are your deal. That's not No, my they're deal. not. That's so not how I vote. If a Democrat sounded conservative, I would vote for him. I tell you what, I wouldn't want any uh, Mitt Romney appointing anybody to the Supreme Court. First of all, I mean, how... Of course, because abortion's going to get... Over- not abortion. On. on every single fucking issue. It's out of line. Gay marriage. And not, that it's, up, not that it's really up for ag- a Supreme Court vote. But does Scott actually agree with the, the Supreme Court decision that corporations are individuals? Absolutely. Oh, you're out of your mind. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you believe that a corporation is an individual? It is people. When people have money, they're allowed to spend it how they want. If they want to campaign for a you think that's good? Option, that's fine. So corporations should have that right, too. Corporations are made up of people. Yes. But they're not individuals. They're corporations. And they're, they're, they're buying the vote. What if I own the whole corporation? But that's that doesn't you mean, doing something. So why can't you personally donate? But I don't know. Let's not change the subject. All right. Oh, oh we, yeah. that's, you, that you can't discuss. That was probably too complex uh, for us. You jumped the track. I'll have to think about it tomorrow. All right. All right. That's good. You're thinking. Uh, all this bullshit, and then Howard starts reading it. Listen, Howard, Howard doesn't... starts reading. Yeah, it's it's Sorry. dangerous when you start. Yeah. If Howard wouldn't yeah, read, one side. You How... need the New York I've... Times. And by the way, what is that whole oh. dumb Rush Limbaugh rap? New the, the, the New York Times is New York a rag. The New York Times is probably the greatest publication that I can think. Of. What newspaper do you think is more Name informative? The Wall Street Journal. The Wall Street, Rupert Murdoch's Wall Street Journal. You, you think there's no agenda? It used to be a great. That's paper. slanted, right? This is a guy around an organization that that wiretapped people. How are you going to trust any of that? That was in England. It's oh. his organization. They don't do that here. <laughs> Holy cow! Nothing bothers him. Well, he always has a rationale. No, he does a. Blind and by the spot. way, let's point out that Bloomberg, if I may, to Scott, he's an independent. 
<laughs> he was a Republican at one point, at least he claimed to be. Yeah, but he's an independent, so you you hardly would be voting. Because Republicans got sick of him. It's very funny, though. When he said he would vote for a Democrat, the Democrat would have to, have to actually talk like a Republican. Of right. course, because I'm conservative. That makes sense, doesn't it, Robin? But what are you conservative in? I mean, you, you're, what, you think you're conservative. You, do you think the economy could be solved in a simplistic way? I mean, Bush did exactly what you're talking about for eight years. There was a very simplistic approach. Of that time, we had a great economy. Don't you think Bill Clinton... Until it, it fell apart under think, the weight of all that think Bill, bullshit they were doing. Don't you think Bill Clinton's approach to the economy and, and, and a very sensible way of sort of being compassionate. Oh, so also, Bill Clinton was, uh, was sensible and compassionate. I think so. Was just evil and yeah. to make his rich friends richer. Okay, I get it. Uh, yeah, I think you just summed it up. Yeah, all right, good. I, I, think, Bush was a, I, think, I think Bush was a disaster as a president. I think, I think, let me ask you this, Scott. Why is it that Bush was not invited and Dick Cheney, your two heroes, why, why do you think the Republicans, A, didn't mention their name at the convention, and B, didn't invite them to speak? Bill Clinton, former president, invited to the DNC. Well, why do you I think? Why do, let, let me guess him. why. Bill Clinton shunned the election before that because he had just got off of the... His Monica wife Lewinsky ran. Stuff. No, his wife no, ran. The Monica for, Lewinsky stuff, they were hiding Bill Clinton last time around. That didn't affect anybody but him and his marriage. You, you guys Scott, why Go didn't why didn't the Republican Party invite your hero, who did because a great job, George he's, Bush? He's damaged goods right now with the media and how they've with the with media. It. You yeah. think the media? Do you mean yeah. the people did it? The, the media ruined. Tell me it. the policies that Bush did that that gave us this economy right now. Go ahead. He put us but in the war in Iraq, in illegal oh, that, war, and bankrupted the fucking country. How's that? That did it. That bankrupted uh, the, uh, the country. Uh, how much money well, do we spend? Conservatives in? believe we wouldn't even have to pay for a war if we had one. You just asked me for one example, and I just gave it to no, you. No, I want, I want the policies You don't think that's a big deal? The policies domestically that he enacted that hurt our economy. Go ahead. What do I think he did? Yeah, I think, you're telling me he was irresponsible. I'm telling you that his simplistic approach to the economy, which was supposedly to cut taxes, which he didn't... The tax cut. Which he yeah. didn't, that hurt the economy, huh? Cutting taxes? No. It didn't no, help. It, when you just cut taxes... And you think that that's going to cure an economy? It doesn't. If you're under the impression that government doesn't, Im listen. What if we had no rules on Wall Street, which we practically don't? Right. Which Do you see the abuses that have happened on Wall Street? Do you see the amount of people that have rip off? Do you see what happens when there's no regulatory committees and a Bernie Madoff just robs people blind, where they're busy investigating me instead of the fucking uh, instead of a Bernie Madoff? This is what happens when there's no regulations in place. Less regulation. This is what happens. We have a government for a reason. People are corrupt. You do need government intervention. Did Scott see the article in the paper about the fine that was just leveled against the stock market? Because it's proven they treat the fat cats better. And what, I don't even understand what you're talking about when you say Bill Clinton wasn't at the DNC. He gave a speech for Al Gore. He was. He gave a speech they, they for Al Gore. He, yeah, he hit him. He where happened. was Where was George Bush at the Republican convention? I just told. All him. right, good. Okay, all right. right. The media didn't invite but him. What? Why would the media have an effect on the Republican convention if he if they if he's part of that party and they and thought this, he did a good job? Why wouldn't you invite him? But Bush scared of the media. And Bush was all over the place. What about Medicare? Right. What about Medicare? He doubled the size of Medicare after he cut taxes. So how did he cut taxes? Both parties were courting the. Oh, so now it's both parties. He was both the president, but it was both parties. We're trying to. Uh, yeah, so, but they, he was the president, president you motherfucker! I fucking old, hate you. Every night the old. You're such a retard. You can't say Bush did something wrong. It's everybody me. did it Listen then. To me. All right. I had it. Every I night it. you heard on the news that the old people had to choose between their meals and their <laughs> and their pills. All right. They had to take care of that. You know, your head is glowing from the from being close to that equipment. You better move back. <laughs> I don't want anything to happen to your brain. But Scott doesn't think people should get sick anyway. If people didn't get sick, we wouldn't. Uh, if they didn't get sick, friend. if we and shot they should, people, and they should, and they should, and they should yeah. put words in my mouth. Oh yeah. 
I think I, I heard somebody say something. Well, somebody got sick on this show. I'm not going to say who. Their parent got sick. And, well, they should have thought, they should have thought about their future. Really they the Gary, should have thought about their future before the they got story sick. The got really wrong. <laughs> we were talking about Michael Moore's health care movie. Right. And I just feel that, yes, people do have some responsibility for their health care. It's not a right that yeah, you Yeah, so have. They, they plan to get sick. Is that it? No. So they're victimized twice. So they get sick. And then if guys like you say, no, you can't collect on an insurance policy. Gary's dad was not sick dying at the time, or at least it wasn't exposed. All right, all right, all right, but I don't want to get into this. Okay, all right, enough. Oh, so treat him when it's too late. Yeah. Just open your mind up to other opinions. I'm not... I, don't do you dare get yours. sick in his America. How could you not have voted for Bill Clinton if you were if you were worried about the economy? The guy was doing a fabulous job. You're such a party zealot. He's so blind. You're so blind that you just only want to vote for Republicans. It's like it's like you're a gang member. Yeah, I don't care that something else is working. And we have to have you a, watch, a conservative you, policy. Do you watch in place. Sons of Anarchy? No. Yeah, those guys when they put on their patch, whatever the gang does is good. It doesn't even matter if they do something wrong. They have to stick by the rules. Great analogy. You're going to talk. Right, about but that's Hollywood. how you. But that's how you are with it. You have a gang mentality. It doesn't do matter. I'm conservative. Why didn't fiscally. you vote for Bill Clinton? Honestly, the guy. I, I mean, to be honest, I don't even know if I could vote at that point. Of course you could. What do you mean you? Could? How old was I? You didn't have a hair well, in your head when Clinton was around. in office. He didn't have a hair. How old are you? How old were you? Uh, I am forty-three. <laughs> it was twenty years ago. You could have voted for him in ninety-two. Right. All right. Well, I don't know. I don't even know if I did vote that election, to be honest. Oh, but that's I wouldn't right. have voted for him because I loved Reagan, and I expected more to come what? out of that same uh, policies <laughs> that uh, that Bush did. Who was Reagan. you? Reagan. <laughs> he loved Reagan. <laughs> yeah. So you got the VP talking the same stuff. You figure it's gonna. So I would uh, think that that would. Nah. Keep going the same But the run. second time you didn't vote for Clinton when he ran? Who did he even run against? I don't even remember who the Republican candidate was. was that, oh, yeah, oh, the, uh, wow. Dole, right? Dole. Yeah. You voted for Dole. Clinton was running yeah, the country, doing did. a great fucking job. Talk about a CEO of a country. I mean, Clinton was getting nailing the fucking I, thing. You could you could you had to vote for Bob Dole. Newsflash to you: I'm conservative. Yeah, but but no, Clinton he's was conservative. Listen, he's Tea Party now. i you know what to say you're conservative is such a label like it's and it's a lazy I'm cons- cop. Out. I'm conservative. I don't want I don't want miss. No, I'm not. I don't want. Um, I, I hate the waste in in office that the, these guys allow. They allow for tremendous, tremendous amount of, of, of uh, government spending that is wasteful. I'm for tightening that up. I mean, I'm conservative in my own life. Uh, you know, with my own money that I make, I'm very conservative. Since I, since I started working for $96 a week, I always would, would never spend more than I made. Even at $96 a week, I always kept my own house in order. So when you say you're conservative, I'm not one of those flashy guys who runs around spending and living a life of debt. I don't have any debt. Well, I understand. You, you're, that's not you. And I, I, I expect the government. You and social I, issues a lot more than I do. Well, I, I certainly have compassion for people. I understand that I got breaks because I'm white, that, that black kids who grow up in, 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 in impoverished neighborhoods deserve Affirmative action. Absolutely. I believe in the fairness. Of well, affirmative. First they deserve an education, and then don't, you won't have to you, waste you money. You grew up in a household with your, with your father and mother who stressed education. How are we going to get out of this hole? Is it the kid's fault that his, his father split on him, that his mother is, is, is not there, his grandmother's raising him? I, I like giving oh, a kid. Any of this stuff. Well, you say, what, what is it you're against? Affirmative action. Are you for it or against it? I think it had its place, and maybe do you it's think it do you had. Think it's had. I'm taking it off the table. Well, yeah, you gonna let me talk or not? Well, are you for it or against it? It's a simple yes or no. It's not a simple yes. Or of no. course it is. No, it's not. It's not a simple. All right, let me hear your answer. What about affirmative action? I believe that it had its place, and at some point, that you would need to end or or start slowing down a policy like that because what it does is it keeps people <laughs> do in you their think, place. Do you think if things I have improved? If I got a job because of my color and not because of my skill, well, I believe that that would not be a great thing. Let me ask you something. Do you think it helps the entire country if impoverished people, I'm talking about children, who are raised in... Affirmative action is listen not for to me. impoverished people. Sure it is. It's it, it's for impoverished people. Oh, That's why it was set up. All, what do you think? It's for the most rich? Most blacks are fine. Most yeah. Let, let's, are fine. Say, let's say, you, let's say it's a yeah, white you're kid. You're equating impo- impoverished people let, with black yeah, people. Yeah, that's right. Let's say, do, that. do, you know, do you know that most unions, 
would not allow black people in the union. They couldn't even get uh, uh, jobs within unions for construction and things. So you know what they did with affirmative action? They said, you know what? We're going to force you. We're going to force you, Whitey, and to put a thing. few black people on and, let, and, and learn to work with people. And, and Scott's premise is that if you are working under affirmative action, you can't do the job. Which is another man, misconception. Is I said, Robin, don't put words in my mouth. You said I if I was hired because I was black of instead of my skill level. I said exactly opposite of that. I would want to win a job on my merits, not... Sometimes you can't. And if you can't because color. you're black... Well, that's not true. I don't believe the country if it's rigged, like you do. It, 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 huh? Stop it. Stop. It, it, you don't think the system was rigged in the unions against some yes, black people? Yes, it was. I think we've come And still way. is, is, is. There's an article well, in the paper to today about a North idiot. Carolina sheriff they proved his, was discriminating against the criminal. God, okay, one case here and there. That doesn't mean the here whole there. country uh, is uh, racist. Uh, no, that's tip of the iceberg, fella. You can't even get it. Your hands are shaking like a leaf. My hands always shake. Wow. Especially when we're yelling at you. Don't get right. yeah, they, they do It's your okay. All right, Scott, look, <laughs> I love you. I don't want to talk politics with you anymore. Good. Yeah, I don't either. I mean, you, you, you just... We can't. I think you got hit in the head. I think he fell on his head. <laughs> <laughs> that's how he lost his hair. Look, I, I am a fiscal conservative. I don't like waste and government waste. See, no I, one does. I think Scott likes to use that that because he doesn't have any other strategy. He, but that's he exactly tries to use what the social do. issue. So you don't think that corporate welfare is a is a bad thing, right? When companies Wait, get are we, are we talking huge, to me again? I wasn't huge no. tax breaks. No, 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 no. no, no. Oh, good, I'm sorry, good. sorry. Of course, you know this idea that these uh, companies get corporate tax breaks. It's the unbelievable. Thing, I think the thing that bothers me, and I don't know if Scott can agree with this or disagree with this, but when we outsource jobs and we create no new industries over here, and yet these guys continue to get tax breaks, he doesn't have a tax problem breaks. with what that. What about these American companies? There's no companies. middle class. The middle class is disappearing. What but about the only people who are thriving are the one percent at the top? What That's about? That's not a problem. What Bobby about? Is that guy fed? Is that what you're saying? What What's about that? these the companies? To outsource all these jobs. R- Romney's. A, a I'm job saying destroyer. a lot of businesses, not, not just Ro- not, not just Romney. Look at guys like Carnegie who created an industry. Look at guys like Henry Ford who created an industry. These guys don't create an industry; they just create wealth for themselves. Here's an ad that um, I think Scott will agree with. Let me find it. I'm going to find it for you. Here's something you'll like. My daddy says Mitt Romney doesn't support guys putting their peepees in other guys' butts. So he's voting for Romney. I'm Mitt Romney, and I approve this message. I agree with that. There you go. Well, <laughs> yes. Howard, read Gotta the article Scott posted. Like that. What? Read that article that Scott Well, I can't posted. do it now. Mom. No, I mean, I don't mean write the second. Well, I mean, what, what does it's it say? It's so idiotic. I mean, it really is. Uh, Fred put one You're up from... idiot. I know. Fred's the one. Uh, uh, he put up one from CNN that kind of countered some of Taibbi's points. And they made legitimate points, but the article Scott put up is almost 99% opinion. And it's just him screaming at Taibbi, it's a communist, Taibbi's a liberal, that's Taibbi's this, the but there's no action. Well, that's what the Scott entire, likes to do. He I read the entire he, thing. It's a, gang, it's a gang mentality. But if you read exactly it. exactly how Scott argues. There's right. almost no instance where he said. He doesn't have any facts in the article. Yes. Right. Almost not. plenty of facts in the article. Well, that that uh, only 22% of beans. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to do two jobs at once. I'm trying to switch the show and, and argue with you. Well, you understand there's Bain. percent of Bain's companies that they took over, which were all failing companies, actually went under. I think that's a pretty strong track record, not a bad one. All right. Okay. How many jobs did they cut, though, in saving those Every others? It took company them... cuts jobs. They, in the article, they talk about how What's many that? jobs. It took them 20 pages to get to that one. I've never read an article so long that said absolutely nothing. But I encourage you to read it, and I encourage you I to will read, read it. the one I told us, uh, Fred I put out. Yeah. I will read it today. Please send them to me, too. I'd love I'm going to send that to you as soon as I ignore I it. Hate, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> See, now you have to hate us. We don't hate you. No, so I hate him. I feel him. sorry I for you. you. It's Jason. He's a douchebag. <laughs> Somewhere along the line, that guy got a shit hand in life, and now he's fucking miserable. What? Uh, <laughs> what? Did, Jason didn't say anything very different than what Howard said. He, he, gave Jason. Mo- he gave a picture of me in the monitor the finger, Gary. Wow. Might be, might be because you called him a jerk-off when he walked in. <laughs> Just you know, for me, Romney's one of those guys who went out and protested. He, he, he not protested, but he actually he went out and 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 um, I guess 
I guess protested in favor of the Vietnam War. He protested the protesters, and yet he got <clears throat> four And then he fled to France to avoid the draft. <laughs> Another guy who didn't go. Right. right. I mean, don't go You know, out. because I don't have to go, I'm all for the war. He's for the Vietnam War, but, but he wasn't willing to serve. Obama do. Well, Ob Obama wasn't hey, around for the Vietnam War. wasn't eligible for anything yeah, I, at I that think time. he might have been a little young for that. Yeah. What did Obama do? But Are you out of your mind? Obama didn't run around <laughs> preaching he's for the war and then he's not pretty, fight. He's pretty consistent about how he feels about things. Yeah, he basically continued Bush's policy of ending the war in Iraq. You just read that the other day. I didn't read that. Yes, you did. In the New York Times. <laughs> I wouldn't read that in the New York Times. Oh, my God. It's just <laughs> fucking amazing. Now, when you see a guy who, who, I mean, during Vietnam, I protested against the war. You know why? Because you might have gone. Yeah, I didn't want to go. Even his father. I would not have gone. I saw that the war was retarded. Even Romney's father at one point said that he was brainwashed about yeah. the whole thing. But Romney goes out and not only doesn't show, he says the war is a good thing, and then avoids the draft? Fuck you. That's when you want to take the person's protest sign and hit them. Yeah, you, yeah. Go, you go fight the war. Go fight if you really believe in it. And that's who Romney is as a human being. That's who your president will be. He keeps trying to pretend that he has compassion for others, but he does not. And no. his answer to everything, go bankrupt. All right, anyway, listen, I, 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 we're supposed to be talking about dick jokes and stuff. Right. Yeah, what are we doing? And farting. And, and Bill Hader. And Bill Hader. <laughs> now I want to meet him. <laughs> You're going to meet him. I'm going to set you up. <laughs> What's up, Greg? Scott, once again, you get sucked into the Stern Show political forum. It's this time of year, man. It's uh, election season. And I wish I had it in me to just sit back and not say a word, but that's not my, it's not my nature. I've got to let them know when they've said things that are inaccurate. And there's been a lot of that recently. What compels you, though? What... What do they say about conservative politics, or what about their liberal slant gets you so riled up that you can't just ignore it? it it's the usual stuff, that conservatives are heartless, and we want everyone to die, we're just out for the rich, and, uh, you know, it's that same old crap that just isn't true. Conservatives want this country to be successful just as much as liberals do. It's just a different way to get there. Was there ever a time in our political history or in your career here with the Stern Show that you felt yourself aligning with Howard's beliefs? Yeah, I think in the past Howard was definitely more conservative. Something happened to him over the past five, ten years. Maybe it's marriage, maybe it's, um, I don't know, but he's, his views have changed without a doubt. I'm sure he'll, he'll say that, oh, he's been enlightened or he's been reading some more, but he was definitely much more he fell in line a lot more with my views than they do now, and that's fine. He's always been socially, I would say he was a libertarian in the past, and now he comes off, I, he wouldn't admit to this, but I would say he's a liberal. And, uh, you know, I'm more libertarian in that I don't care about the social issues, I care about the uh, fiscal issues. Do you think you're being hard-headed in that you refuse to disassociate yourself with the Republican Party, that you're not really voting for the man, but for the party itself? Well, what's interesting is is around here, they call me, I'm the sheep who just follows the Republican Party. But it's it's odd. I, I would think if I was the sheep, I'd follow what Howard said or the rest of these goof-offs said. I've got my own opinions that uh, I don't know, you know where they came from. I think they come from pure logic, but uh, I'm sure people would argue that that's my... Uh, surroundings or the you know how I grew up but uh, I am who I am and I believe it and it's the equivalent of someone telling me two plus two is five it just doesn't make sense and uh, it's who I am at the end of these arguments Howard always says I love you Scott but I can't talk politics with you it gets a little bit personal but it seems like you guys are, are still on good terms do you ever get to the point where you're just like it, it becomes almost personal with your feelings or with, the, you know, you get so heated that you can't look past the man. I, I know I, it's gotten that way with Jason, obviously. That's yeah, very that's what I was going to say. I think there are only two people here whose politics, maybe a third, uh, you know, Gary, uh, Jason, maybe Fred, are, I believe, that the type of people who um, take politics or my view and, and you know, decide that I'm a bad person because of it. I don't think Howard's that, and I don't think Robin's that. Um, but yeah, some of the arguments I do sort of get concerned. I, I better watch what I say, but 
Howard's always been pretty cool about that. He's not a type of guy who says, you know, I'm going to tell you guys how to think, and if you don't, you're out. He's always been, he wants us to be uh, free. So until I hear otherwise, I'm going to uh, say what I believe, and that's that. If it becomes a problem, I'll just find a way to shut up. This is the best of the wrap-up show. A recap and behind-the-scenes look with John High and Gary Delabate. The best of the wrap-up show begins now. Hey, it's Gary Delabate. On Monday's wrap-up show, we talked about Shuley sitting in, how we thought he was doing. Did the audience like him? I know I liked him. Here's how it went. Let's go to Kim in Philadelphia. Kim, you're on the wrap-up show. Hi there. How are you? Good, Kim. How you doing? I'm good, thanks. Um, I just wanted to say I caught the show a little later today, but I heard Shuli, and was he, like, in for someone, or... Shuli sat, sh- sat in for the entire show, right next to Benji. So is that going to be a permanent place for him, or... I don't know. Uh, Gary will have to answer that question. I don't think it is. I think it's something that the guys wanted to try to see how it went. Uh, but oh, I see Gary coming, and he can answer your question. Gary, the question okay. here from Kim is, uh, is Shuley sitting in permanently, or is it something that you just wanted to try out? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, it's something that we're trying out. We don't commit to okay, anything. I- he is awesome on the show. I mean, he gives... He seemed like he was a little nervous today. Like, usually he's a little more forthcoming but um he was awesome yeah i mean he brings you know every i always say it's a it's a marathon not a sprint so a lot of people can be sound great the first day and then after a month you're like oh my god i'm sick of that person so that's why we like to try people out i think shuli's very funny and he brings an element to the show today which john witnessed before the show even started which is him he was busting my balls I played a clip for Howard, and he already started like busting my balls and cracking jokes. It was I said, oh, my God, Jackie lives again. But Shuli wasn't sure if he did the right thing, because I know he was thinking, like, did I piss off Gary? But Should... did you, you miss the conversation during uh, one of the No, breaks. I heard it. I know exactly what you said. And, and he said to me, he goes, listen, I'm really sorry. I said, don't be sorry. That's your job. I go, your job. I go, I can get mad at you, which I was, but it doesn't mean you should stop fucking with me. That's your job. Jay and Phoenix, you're on the wrap-up show. Hello, is this for me? Yes, Jay, it's for you. Hey, sorry, man. I'm packing up a bowl right now. Um, I've been up since uh, 3 o'clock this morning, guys, and I was really pleased to hear uh, uh, Shuli on there, man. Congratulations, bro. Um, it's been a long time, a long time overdue. Um, I'm kind of wondering what happened with Benji since, uh, you know, I really don't give a shit, but, you know, I'm just kind of wondering what caused him not to be on there. And he is on. Is, Benji uh, was on this morning. He, In other uh, words, Benji's in the studio every morning. Benji's probably less of an on mic guy and more of a writer guy, but Benji was there. Okay, yeah. Um, you know, like I said, it was three o'clock in the morning, and I've been smoking, so I really didn't catch all that. But you know what? No Shuli vortex, man. You know, it was it was good. You know, and uh, even with the way he does the uh, the block parties and stuff, he's a very intricate part of the like a buffer for the fans to the show. So I think him being in there was like, you know, like way better than than Benji. You know, with the little world he lives in. Uh, Benji, before you came in here, a couple people were calling about Shuli sitting in, and somebody said thought you weren't even there today. Oh, uh, really? But we explained how you're kind of more off mic and right versus Shuli being I, on I mic I had a today. great writing, lots and lots of stuff. But is, is it okay to talk about how, how things happened this morning, or do you not want to talk about that? That's uh, that's forbidden. No, seriously. What do you mean? About... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can talk about anything. Okay. I'm fine with So, Benji really had a, a close call this morning and the close call was 
Benji was really, for all intents and purposes this morning, was late. And the show would have started. But what happened was Tim came in. Like, Fred was playing the song. Fred goes, you're on. And then somebody gives me the elbow and points to Benji's chair. And Benji's chair is empty. Benji is not there. And I, I go to Howard. I point to the chair. And he goes, oh, fuck. And then Tim came in. And Tim was talking about the black iPhone and the white iPhone and everything. <laughs> and that was probably 30 seconds. And within that 30 seconds, Benji came in. But had Tim not been there, no, I, you I, were it was, done. It, but as you've seen, like, I've been coming in, like, with, you know, early. But that's like Sal no, saying, no, no, that's no, like Sal no, saying he only forgot no, no, the no, meeting. No, at no, the... no, no. I, listen, I totally fucking lucked out with, with, the, with that, uh, that Tim got two iPhones. Thank God. But it was like, I'm telling you, there was, like, something crazy going on on the east side. Where they locked you up in a lane and everything. It yeah, was, I know exactly like what it is. Yeah, the UN. The UN's here. I, I, and it sucks, and I should have realized it, and I lucked out. But like, so w- just if I could dissect this a little bit, if nothing's going wrong, what time do you usually get here? Um, I think usually now, not not every, not always, but usually I'm getting here in time when you guys are talking. But what about, time? Uh, uh, like uh, at least 10, 15 minutes early, or before the show starts. Because because uh, I'm in there with Howard by like generally by five thirty. Oh so, no so, no I'm not like like uh, like between like five fifteen and five like a little five you mean five fifty yeah no I said I'm sorry five forty five and uh, a little past five fifty usually I mean I'm seeing like you usually see me there now Benji, generally yes I, I mean I was really worried for you because if Tim doesn't do that it's a whole different day and Shuli's sitting there and yeah, it's almost right. like. You, it was like we set it up but we didn't yes yeah yeah you were kind of asking for it I guess unintentionally yeah no I, I it. I'm going to go with more padding in yes. the future. Like, for That's sure. what, that was the conversation I was going to have with you off the air. You really, there's no good reason. Like, there's no good reason why you shouldn't be shooting to be there by, by five thirty because gives you padding. Yeah. No, no. Not only are you padding, but I'm in there by five thirty-five. That's probably right. the average. I'm in there by five thirty-five, and there's no good reason why you shouldn't be in there hearing what we're talking about and saying, "Oh, here's a, here's what you should do with that." Or yeah. you know what I mean? How is the dynamic between the three of you, you, Fred, and Shuli back there? Um. Oh, here's Shu- here's Shuli. There, you know, there it was. I, I think everyone's comfortable. It's like, uh, it's not the same as if like someone comes in completely from the outside because everyone knows Shuli well. So it's not, it's not so like it's not like an awkward kind of thing. Well, let me throw this at you because because you've been on the other side of this and and you understood your intentions when you sat in the studio with Jackie. He did not like it, and you were not an outsider. So when Shuli, who's not an outsider, comes in today, how does that make you feel? When you first uh, mentioned it to me the other day, for a second I have all kinds of like insecurities and uh, like I guess some jealousies and things like that, some like uh, like dry skin things like that. But like uh, pretty quickly, like I first of all I realize like I'm not in control here at all, and and it's it's a good reminder not not in a negative not in a negative way like Shuli's out to get, but it's a good reminder that I have very little control over what happens. In that kind of sense, but uh, I, and it, it, I'm 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 kind of invisible as it is. I had a great fucking writing day. Like today was a very, you know, some days are stronger than others. Today was boom, boom, boom. Like a lot of really good stuff that I was proud of. But I only I'm the only one that knows that. So right. and, 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 and it doesn't really make a difference if if Shuli's in there and he's adding to it and Howard likes it. It's not. It doesn't change what my function is anyway. I agree with you, but it's hard for most people to be that yeah, mature it's, it's, about it. But a, I do agree with you 100. Surely being in there today had nothing to do with you. We, you know, Howard just thought it might be fun to have uh, you know an extra voice in there, and I wasn't even sure that Shuli was coming in as a voice at all today. Quite honestly, Shuli was, was coming in. I thought as a writer, but then sometimes it just it's organic. It was told to me in different ways. You know, first I was going in just to write, and it was like maybe he'll talk to you, maybe he won't. Then it was like, all right, you're going to be more in a talking role than writing. And I got to tell you, you know, watching Benji, I mean, he really is like he said, he's invisible. People don't realize how much shit he he puts out there. He's like a machine with that stuff. He's, like, he's like an NFL lineman. You know, the, the, the guy's going to score a bunch of touchdowns and no one's ever going to say the right guard did a great job. Right. And, and I, I told him, I was like, it was really impressive to to watch him crank that stuff. Like, I wrote like, I don't know, four things, five things today and, and he, he's just the whole time. You know what was so surreal for me about today is like my first real successful call to the show was one of when I put together a Gary game. The first game I ever put together where I took fights between Gary and Howard and I would take one line out of these fights that Gary said that pissed Howard off and then make up two other ones and ask Howard to pick the real one. And it got off to that. My my career with this show got off because of Gary and kind of goofing on him. 
and literally before the mics were even on this morning, I pissed Gary off, <laughs> goofing on but him. But I said, I told you that you should just keep doing it. You could piss I, me off. I, Mary and I were having a conversation the other day about the growing number of people who are on the show who made their bones fucking with me. Right. Sal. So Sal started, then Shuli second, and now Wolfie is a contributor to the show, and Wolfie used to mess with me a lot, too. So that's the path to success here, just goofing on you? I guess. I mean, I, I will tell you, the weirdest moment I ever had was when, like, Sal and I were in, like, the smoking room at K-Rock when he was doing the contest, and I was like... I said, you know, we're there talking, he's doing this, doing that. And I'm like, I can't believe I'm helping you and pulling for you. <laughs> but but I was. It's my job. Mark in Los Angeles, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, good morning, guys. How you doing? Hey, Mark. I just wanted to say, you know, I've been a long-time listener, been almost 30 years, and um, uh, Benji is a gr- I think, you know, that the one thing that we don't realize about Benji is how much he really gives the show. We never hear him. So, you know, I was really happy to hear Shuli pipe up this morning and say, you know, Benji is just cranking shit out nonstop. And, you know, and I've always liked Benji. So he annoys the shit out of me when he's late for work. And But, it's, it, you know, it's fun when his balls get busted. So it's a, it's a cat funny, too. Yeah, Benji, ben, say- Benji's, not more, Benji's not really an on-air guy, so the only time you hear Benji on-air... Is when he's in trouble. Which, again, like an NFL lineman, the only time you hear him is when the flag is thrown. But isn't, <laughs> that, but isn't that the case for everybody? I mean, people love you, but they love hearing you get but, your but balls But I'm saying busted. that you don't... If Benji doesn't get his balls busted, right, he's then, doing, you don't, then Benji's just quietly in the back doing what he was hired to do and doing it very well. Yeah. But what I do love is that when Howard does ask him a question once in a while, and his, his answer is so ridiculously outrageous... He gets his balls busted because he's just answering. <laughs> but but he is, he's very outrageous. I, to, I was talking to Howard about Benji the other day, and I said the thing that I love about Benji, I love when we're in a meeting and there's like, you know, ideas are being thrown around. And Benji comes up with an idea that is so ridiculously outrageous that I get almost dismissive of it. I feel bad. And Howard goes, well, hold on a second. And Howard, like, reaches in and finds this crumb from that idea that works. And I think that's why Howard Howard loves Benji being the guy who's so out in left field, but you can find something in that idea and make it work. Do you agree, Benji? I, I appreciate all you said. Thank you. Hey, this is Jason, and on Tuesday's wrap-up show, we had the follow-up to Sour Shoes coming in his pants. Lisa G just touched him on the shoulder, and he blew his load, so we hear from Lisa and Sour Shoes about that. Also, my fight with JD continues, and Benji throws himself in the ring. Check it out. Lisa, when you walked over to Sour Shoes... Could yeah. you tell that he was getting excited as you started to uh, rub him a little bit? Well, I even before I walked over there, because he said that he's he has a crush on me. So like I was telling Greg Carmel, I knew what I was dealing with before I even walked over there. And I knew I wouldn't have to do a lot to get him excited. And you had no So qualms. don't give me so much credit. No, really? You, no, you deserve the credit. I mean, you know, you actually got him to deliver. But did you have any second thoughts as you were crossing over? Were you worried that there was going to be repercussions from this? Or No, I, I thought that it was going to be okay. And I was also reading Howard. I was looking at his face. And I just felt it was an okay thing to do. Wouldn't be so bad. Sour Shoes, have you always had a crush on Lisa G? Yeah. And so was this a dream come true as she walked over to you? Mm-hmm. Did you think you were going to last as long as you did? No, I didn't. Yeah. I knew it was going to be fast. And I knew it was going to be fast. <laughs> See, Gary, don't you think there's a little bit of chemistry between these two? Well, certainly for him there is. For Lisa, I think Lisa finds him sweet, yes. I would say would be the word. I've heard Lisa describe what she's looking for in a guy before, both on the air and off the air. And one of the things she constantly says is, I don't want a guy I have to take care of. She right. wants a man. And I, unfortunately, I think Sauer would be a guy yeah. who got to well, take care of. That's the thing. He comes into the newsroom, Gary, and he's talking like he's, you know, 33. And then all of a sudden he pulls out the, the mitt and the glove and he's a five-year-old. Well, are you morally against the idea of dating a guy who lives with his parents? <laughs> <laughs> what if his parents live in an awesome house? I mean, if he's supporting his parents, you know, that's another story. How but. long have you had the first baseman's glove? Um, it was my older brother's first. And who's, so. who's which, which signature's on it? Is it Ed Cranepool? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> I have an Ed Cranepool signature. John, what do you want to ask? I'll never forget seeing Sour in his house in the attic 
There's a low ceiling, and he's like hunched over, staring out the window, like looking out onto the pool and the landscape. And he's talking about Lisa G. Just talk, 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 talk really? in a normal voice. Yeah, we did a piece on it when I was out there. Do you remember that? Like leaning over, peering out of the short attic. Yeah. I mean, you, it was like you were in love with her. Mm-hmm. Like, do you want to get married? Yeah. Sarah, what's your favorite voice to do of all the impressions that you do? Gary, because he, because that's I really, the greatest. Oh, I love Gary, that. I was, hope, I was hoping you would say Mad Dog because it's so dead on. It, your Mad Dog is the best. But ever, it's Gary because I, because like the way Sal is to Howard, that's how I've been. You know. No, I think Gary loves you. Yeah, no, I like you. I think you're amusing and funny and everything. I, Gary used to I hate think Sal. he's actually funny at there's certain things he does, like when someone's on the phone. Like, like about ten years ago, you said, you know, I think it'd be great if if we could, you know, th- we have callers that call in. Wouldn't it be great to find to see like their whole setup, what it would be like. You remember saying that about maybe, years? yeah, and like things like that. I always laugh or when he goes, wait, 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 wait. I, I what do you do for a living? <laughs> uh, can you do an impression of, of Gary cutting off Mary? To talk to Howard. Oh, oh, let's so Howard. Does, does Gary? Does Gary have a the move when he cuts off? People? A go-to move. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be talking. Right. Hey, Howard. One time, Gary and I went to the Cayman Islands, and I, I, it, what, real quick. What, no, real quick. All right, I, I, real quick. <laughs> All right, forget it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. It's discouraging. Chris and Albany. <laughs> Jason, I would warn you not to not to piss off the one person left in the office who likes you. Well, we'll get to that. Chris and Albany, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, now. hey Chris. Hey, I just wanted to say I love sour shoes. I, I could I could have him two or three times a week. Everything he does makes me laugh so hard. He's very underused in that show, in my opinion. But I wish he had more shows like the music shows and whatnot. But right on for him today. Hey, we agree with you. We think he's fantastic. You don't think it got it gets played out though after a while? No, I was enjoying it. Did you feel that way when you were in there? Uh, so yeah, like if I listen back later on tonight, I'll say eh, a little. Probably a little too much. So as you're sitting there, are you kind of picking your spots in your head, like yeah. when you should p- pipe as in? If, as if, yeah, as if well, I'm listening and what I want to hear. Hey, by, by the way, I, I pointed that to Howard during a break, and we couldn't really uh, squeeze it in. Who was the caller today from Chicago? Ne- Nick? Was it Nick in no. Chicago? No, the voice you, you the one you oh. said who was on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> um... Was it Ray Romano? No, Jason. No. Do you remember John? Yeah, you said it was Walter Parizader from Chicago. Oh yeah, that's so. So, so tell him what that means. Um, he's he's the the brass player in the band. He's yeah. one of the founding members of the band Chicago. So he's actually how... the guy that plays the flute on Color My World. Oh. I thought it was like the like a second baseman for the Chicago <laughs> Cubs. It's actually the guy from Chicago. <laughs> that's that's one of the most amazing things I think about you. There's so many references that you tuck into your impressions, and oh, yeah. I think people miss a lot of them, like that. You know, <laughs> like who would know who Walter Parasader is? Well, that's the only way I could get he would pick up if I just kept coming up the gamut of different celebrity names. I, I have to tell you. So Something. He calls all the time <laughs> and leaves messages, and he, he'll call as a bunch of ex mats Secretary State Schultz. Or he'll call as a bunch of um, politicians. Uh, um, like, sort of 60s and 70s musicians, but or, sort of... So, do you know who called the other day? And I, what my first inclination was that it was Sour Shoes. Oh, yeah. Keith Emerson from Emerson Lake Park. <laughs> but it actually was Keith Emerson. <laughs> but I would have bet the farmer was Sour Shoes. <laughs> that would be a name he would call as. Do you enjoy playing that game with Gary? You I guys do, have been doing it for I love, a long as as time. Goes, Hey, how can I help you? He puts these. I go. Ah, <laughs> All right, here's it's the, going, here's so the big funny. question: Who knows who's better at the music trivia? Oh, you he th- is. He is. I think you are, Sal. He is. One thing I always said about how how I'm, I'm amazed how he gets him. It's over the phone and how he can pick out what songs they are. Yeah, Gary, you're incredible at it, but. I think Sour's got you beat. Not by a lot, but by a little bit. The, the only thing that's tough with Sour Shoes is sometimes some of the songs that he does that are a little bit more obscure, his arrangements don't aren't always there for me. Mm-hmm. But I think he I, you know, he can do almost anything you throw at him. Now, when you realized you weren't going to make it here on time this morning, were you were you freaking out? What, how were yeah, you dealing with that? I was, because cause, uh, it was actually the car overheating. So, But I had three uh, extra antifreeze jugs and some bars leak repair. So I, my dad always knew, told, showed me how to throw that in and then put it over. By the way, I saw this in the notes, and I don't know if we got a chance to talk about it today, but uh, I, I think I heard that Sour Shoes' parents were hoping that today's appearance could result in him getting a voiceover job, because he has done some voiceover for some other stuff. But I think now that I'm a parent, I think they're getting to that place where they want to know that you're well taken care of when they go. Do you yeah. think they worry about you? I think a little bit. Did they have a good insurance plan? <laughs> well, I, I got a question. His dad. I have a question when you get a chance. So go ahead, Ryan. <laughs> you already got, piped in, so I got, go ahead. I got a question. Do your parents worry when you leave the house with that car? Um, 
Did they get? They used I mean, to. I, did I, they call I, and check up on you where used, you are and everything? They did at school. They worried because I was staying at the school in the car. Right. They worried, but I would always come home on weekends, and the car wasn't as good then. Why did you have to? I the, mean, your parents obviously take care of you. Why did you have to sleep in the car? Because I didn't get financial aid. Oh, okay. So I was mm. trying to. <laughs> And Sauer's dad is an elected official, was for 25 years in their town. I mean, his dad is a big deal in Mayopac. Similar to Parks and Recreation. Yeah. Do you, do you have a cell phone? No, not yet. <laughs> have you ever had one? Yeah. Our, the family I do the direct care for, for Autism Speaks, they have a track phone. And right. And if there's a storm, they give it to me. And they gave it to me for the block party. Wow. To, and I used it to call Shuley to tell him where I was. But like now, I mean, you're out now. They have no way of no, communicating with you to here. find out if you're all right or yeah. alive. It's like or, the 70s. All yeah. over <laughs> Logan in Washington, you're on the wrap-up show. What's that? Hey, you're on the wrap-up show, Logan. Oh, hey, John. Big fan. Hey, uh, my question is, uh, is in regards to Jason. Jason, do you worry about what is going to happen after the show got this off the air as far as how you get along with the people in your office? No. And how that's, how that's going to translate? into another job because you seem to antagonize a lot of people to, in, to benefit the show. Yeah. But well, okay. Are you going to let me answer? You're going to keep talking. Whoa. Oh, well, I have another quick question. Well, hold on. Let me answer the first question and you can ask the second I'll question. Ke I'll keep you on, Logan. The, the answer is no, not at all. First of all, I get along with a vast majority of my coworkers all the time. Like any other workplace, especially a workplace where you talk about everything on the air, sometimes you have issues with people and most of them uh, get worked through. And uh, actually, I feel more secure in my position here and in my future than I ever have before. So the answer is no. Okay, I, it just it, that, I'm, I don't work there, and I, I don't know. I mean, right. this is just the impression you get off the radio. No, I know but, it's a you know because what happens is you only hear the negative stuff. You only hear when 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 things are going fine. That doesn't make the air. When when there are fights. You know, this is certainly not the first time J.D. and I have, have butted heads. Well, and that's a, that was something I was very surprised to hear. I'm in the office, right. and I know both guys really well. When Howard said on the air, oh, there's a new feud, like five people in the office go, it's not new at all. No. And I did not know... I mean, I didn't think they were best friends, but I didn't know there was a bit of a feud that's been going on the for, thing is, for how long. And and, and I, I will talk, and then I will shut up and let J.D. say whatever he has to say. J.D. Okay. Uh, J.D. doesn't like me. And it's been a long... I, I, said this, I th said this, I think, a few months ago. It's been a long time coming for me to realize that. Meaning, first, he used to blow up at me, and I'd be like, whatever, we're friends, this is meaningless. Then, he used to blow up at me, and I was like, oh, fuck, you know, you know why, is he, why is he singling me out? Why do I seem to bother him so much? Now it's gotten to the point where I'm just like, no, you just... He flat out doesn't like me. Ronnie seemed to have no problem with what I said about the block party. Shuli certainly seemed to have no problem with the, what I said about the block party. JD has an issue with me that goes way outside what I said to the news yesterday. He just doesn't like me. It's a one-sided feud, though, because aside from being annoyed by the fact that JD doesn't like me, uh, you know, I have no ill will towards him. I am now done talking. JD, step to the mic, please. What do you, what, you say what, as Oprah says? I mean, I... I... I really have nothing to say. I really don't. It, it's it's an uphill battle fighting with Jason because, especially with me, um, because I can't state my my points so clear all the time, and uh, he's he's smarter than me. He's able to verbalize it uh, better too, and uh, you know that's that, that's I, I try. I I had a weak moment yesterday where I spouted a little too much uh, than I should have, and. Uh, that's basically where we are today. Yes or no answer. Yes or no answer. Yes. Do you like Jason? I like Jason more mm. outside of the office, uh, more than inside the office. So is Jason incorrect when he says JD does not like me? It, it, there, <laughs> I, I tend at moments like this, I tend to just hate everything about Jason. Uh, so when do you like him? Whenever he's not involved with me, <laughs> whenever he's not necessarily focused, whenever he's not really trying to fuck me over or, you know, shit like that. But Jason uh, brings up an interesting point. Like a lot of people break balls. What's different about Jason breaking your balls? This wasn't uh, this wasn't busting balls. This was almost like I was, you know, he was stating how, well, first of all, as a friend, uh, if he had like such this important case or whatever. Uh, he would have came off to me off the air and, and said, you know, this, that, you know, maybe you shouldn't do this, whatever. But, but Instead, what, hold on. Instead, he went right to the news and, st and, and talked. And in fact, while I was in the office, I had to speak so loud, you know, loudly to explain his case so I could overhear it. 
And that, you know, that was a little more. But I think from what I'm getting from both of you, it's pretty clear that you're not friends. I mean, do we hang out all the time? No, I mean, we hang out in certain circles because we just happen to be invited to the same I thing. would say definitively that I do not believe JD and I are friends. And I'm not saying that because I don't like JD. That's not true. I, I like JD, but I wouldn't. there's nothing that happens in our relationship that could be classified as friendly at this point. Are you friends? And friends aren't just two people who <laughs> hang out in the same circle of friends. Right. I mean, are you friends? Would you ever call him to go out? Would he ever call you to go out? I used to. Uh, yeah, I mean, he he used to. I I don't really call anyone to go out hardly. <laughs> but what was the but, last time, uh, What was the last time you guys hung out? Because one of you said to the other, "Let's go do something." Um, I don't think that's been for a while. If Jason was getting beat up on the street, would you laugh or just walk away? No, I I would suggest you walk away. I'm, I'm just saying, not not because you can't beat someone up. Like I would walk away from you being beat up or anybody being. Beat up. <laughs> there there are well, two. <laughs> I would try and do something at least oh, to so help. You're, you're a better guy than me. There are two issues I think with Jason. One is I think everybody has gotten into a tiff with Jason at one time or another. Yeah. But everybody, well, I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people fear getting into it with him on the air because he's excellent at arguing uh-huh. on the air and he'll cut people apart in three seconds. I, I don't. It's think re- it, I don't think it's fear. At least not with me. I think. He will and I, he will do things in a devious way that other people might not might not do. That may be a little part, but you heard him in there today. I mean, he's excellent. Uh, he's a when good it comes old, to that. But the he's, second, uh, what are these well, devious things? Benji? Let me finish my point. But the second okay. thing, which I think is irksome, and he knows it is, he relishes in you getting pissed off. Yeah. He laughs. He tweaks you. He wants to see you get worked up, and that can be very annoying in, if you're in annoyed. Fact, in fact, today off. Off the air after the bit or, you know, or whatever the hell it was, uh, after we were on air, he went over to the Howard TV. No, no, camera. Howard TV cameras came Hold up on, to me. Talk but to you this. always, no, you say I go. Howard TV cameras came up to me. That's what I'm saying. I was okay. saying he was speaking with the Howard TV camera. Yes. Are we going off the air? Yes. yes. Oh. Okay. Yeah, and I got to get my plug in. So hurry up. Speaking with, the, <laughs> speaking with the Howard TV camera, saying how I'm an uh, uh, an air whore and this and that, trying to irk me, and you know, well, it was right after we walked out of the studio and they asked me about the fight. So yeah. You accused me of being an air whore, so I called you an air whore. Exactly. Yeah. And we both know who's. And an uh, we'll, 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 I'll, I'll talk to Benji about this devious uh, stuff. Well, he I'll says just I give do. an example. You if said, you're here at you work said, on time tomorrow, maybe you, you and I can you, have a face to face before I'll the show. I'll give you an example if you let me answer. <laughs> We're almost out of time. Right Hurry now, up. you said I called you an air whore because you, you called me an air yeah. whore. So was How's that na- devious? So because you're saying I did it just because you called me that. No, That's why I made that up about you. That's not devious. Benji, come to work 15 minutes early tomorrow. We could have a quick meeting. Try not to let Shuli steal your job. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. No, I'll give you another. That's, that's give you, that wasn't a coincidence at yesterday, at Benji. Finest. That's Jason at his finest. That wasn't a coincidence. What wasn't a coincidence? <laughs> Five seconds. No, I'll give you another example. You exaggerate and make things up to make someone else look it's bad. It's much funnier when Shuli says it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> on Wednesday's wrap-up show, all the talk was about the tough love that Gary got on his Nerdist show from Howard. Howard laid into him pretty strongly and said he was just giving him advice on how to improve the show but Gary's feelings were hurt a little bit and he says he kind of knew what Howard was going to say beforehand of course we talked about it here's how it all went down we should probably start off with Gary and the Nerdist show I know how much the show means to Gary he works really hard on it and he's trying to make it great and of course he values Howard's opinion more than anyone else but to get Howard's feedback in that way where Howard says it's the worst thing he's ever seen and after two minutes he couldn't watch it and really ripped into him Gary's got a thick skin but I know that's that's got to get to him and he's working on improving the show and but Howard was telling him nobody's going to watch the show if it starts there so we need to I wonder how Gary's going to handle that and if Howard said something to him off the air to make him feel any better. But it's tough because when you're doing a project like that, you work your ass off on it, you write the script, and you do it. You you want Howard to talk about it, but you want him to talk about it hopefully in a positive way. And if he's negative about it, well, maybe it's like a couple comments and then you move on. But, Gary, you pretty much got your ass handed to you today. Yeah, and I, I wasn't surprised. I pulled John, you know... I should give you the chronology how it all goes down. I sent Howard the link yesterday. Wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it, how he was going to feel about it. Uh, I go in and present all my stuff this morning, and Howard goes to JD, what do you got for me? And he goes, uh, JD, page two, da, da, and Gary's Nerdist program. So we walk out the door, and I said to JD, did Howard ask you to put that up? And he just goes, ah, yeah. <laughs> so he's all embarrassed now. So now I know it's on, it's on the table. 
And I pulled John and I said, John, aside from the fact that he's going to make fun of me for reading badly and all that other stuff, what else, you know, do, do, do I want to see if there were other things that I didn't see coming my way. And John goes, no, but, you know, it's a bad day. You know, you picked the wrong day because there's nobody on the show today. And so I was as prepared as I could be. And you had gotten feedback on, you know, the toughest thing to do is look at a camera and read a script yeah. and look natural doing it. Even John said to me yesterday or the day before, he's like, listen, I think you'd be better if you were just being more natural. And, and there's a lot of reasons that I'll explain to you off the air. I mean, I tried to do that. It wasn't working. But I do want to go back to that. I've, I've Even with the one I shot yesterday, I shoot the week before they air. So even with the one I shot yesterday, I think I've gone more that way and the ones I shoot in the future. So when Howard said, you know, you're reading, I was not, I, I agree with him and I agree that it doesn't look great. And I look online, if you go underneath, it's on YouTube and the comments like, what's wrong with your fucking neck? <laughs> um, let's see, here's some of the comments, you know, and, and it's, it, I mean, you really put your, when you're, when you're on camera alone, you really put yourself out there. Um, you look like an ape. Uh, the first show was, how come your shirt's open so, uh, so big, you hairy chested fucking monkey? Uh, why do you keep tilting your head back? Uh, you're a fucking loser. If Howard saw this, he would be, you know, he would, I can't believe Howard allows this shit quality to go out. So you get a lot of that. But I also am getting some positive feedback on the content. And that's where I took a little bit more issue with him today. And seeing those comments on there, you kind of knew what to expect when right. Howard, because he basically reeled a lot of those off today and critiquing your show. Right. Uh, Adam in Houston, you're on the wrap up show. Yeah, I want to know, Gary, you know, I mean, Howard's always dogging you out, you know, but I know that you guys are very, very close. I'm assuming, you know, off the air, he talks about how he has you at his house at times. How many, how many times has he dogged you on the air, but off the air, pulled you aside and said, hey, you know that was for the show? Does that happen? No. And I don't think, I, there's no part of me <laughs> that thinks that uh -huh. Howard watched it yesterday and loved it, but thought it would be funny to make fun of it. He didn't so like did it. So there's never been a moment where, you know, because, I mean, obviously, you know, you guys are working together, but, you know, as friends, that, that's that got to get you sometimes, right? I mean, have you ever pulled him aside off the air and said, hey, man, you know, I'm really trying with this. I, I'd appreciate a little, you know, going a little lighter. Once. <laughs> Tell me about that. Uh, it was after <laughs> I got dumped by my girlfriend that I wrote about in the book, and, and uh, I was really depressed when we were in the bathroom. I was like... And we were in the bathroom, and I remember uh -huh. we, were, we were washing our hands, and I was like, dude, you know, man, it's just a tough time. If you could just you know, go <laughs> off a little bit. He goes, shut up. My, my or, favorite. Or is it get over it or something like that. My favorite one was, I mean, you've told it before, that your mom called right. his mom to tell him to stop picking on you. Yeah, and he felt bad about that. I was surprised. But uh, yeah, if you listen to the show, you know that's the move that you never want to make because you're just bringing it on 30 times worse. You can't ever show that something's really getting to you and let that's Howard not, I, know. That's not true. If someone said something to him off air, I think he would. And I th I've seen people. It do depends that. on who the someone is. Yeah, I have I have very little, very few cards to play. I agree with that. I think if Gary told Howard something off air, he he Howard couldn't help himself. He, here's a there's a huge difference between a show a Lisa G, or and and a me, because she's newer to the group and you know and 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 so maybe he's like, well, she's not she's on the show, but she's not like a huge part of the show. So, I'll, but for me, I there's no there's no wiggle room. Do you pretty much have a complete control of, over your show so you could do whatever he's say he's saying yes well yeah i think so i actually have a call today which was set up even before today's discussion to talk about that but i i pretty much have complete control over it do you think robin was picking on you a little was she laying it on a little thick you know a lot of a lot of people came to me and said you know boy robin i don't know how you held back from with robin but i thought robin was being who she was today. I mean, that's just what, you know. What do you mean by that? She's she's going to break my balls. He's breaking my balls. She's going to break my balls. So I didn't think it was particularly vicious. There were people who said that, you know, oh, you should go back and pull Robin when she was on CBS Sunday morning and she's reading off the teleprompter. But but I didn't, you know, I, I thought Robin was doing what we do. Do you think Howard will watch the show again? I don't really care. <laughs> I genuinely, I really don't care if he watches again. I mean, I will change what I'm going to change. And I'm not, you know, a lot of people said, did you take Howard's constructive criticism? And my answer is yes, but I already had that constructive criticism. I knew what I needed to do before uh, I did it. And then somebody would say, well, then why'd you send it to him? And the answer was because he asked me to. Does it, does, it, uh, does it help or hurt more what happened today? Well, I was telling this to John. Here's the weird thing. I think in its own odd way, in the long run, it helps. And here's what I would say. The show is not where I would like it to be. But it is not as awful as Howard described it. And, and, and the analogy I made is, probably even with you, Benji, yeah. Howard calls you fat. 
yeah. right? And then people see you in public, and they expect you to be 500 pounds, yeah. and you're not. And then yeah. they go, oh my God, the way Howard described you on the air. So my, my feeling is, maybe I'm out of line, that someone will go and watch the show and go, okay, I see what Howard's talking about, but God, it's not nearly as bad as I thought it was. Yeah, that's why I always tell women, or I used to tell women when I was dating, like, that's my life isn't where it will be one day. But isn't that the best when someone comes to you and says, wow, you're nowhere near as fat as, as Howard yeah, you're says you're not as you ugly, are. you're not as disgusting. I, I will tell you, the, as... some people have said this to me as a joke, but some people have said this to me for real, and they really think they're complimenting me, and they go, oh my God, your teeth aren't so bad. <laughs> but do you think it, does it like, does he, do you, do you feel like, does he paint a reputation that will hurt you at all? Sure. Do you think some people will just be like, be like much more dismissive of it? I think that so I think it will send more people to watch it that people will get to make up their own mind. I think that I'm talking to a very specific audience. And so Howard doesn't really care about the tech stuff at all. The thing that he probably said today on the air that hurt me the most was that um he th- th- I got him this running watch cuz we went running together. Now, I guess you found out what you did with the running watch. I had a pretty good idea what he did with it because I never heard him talk about it again. He called me once and he said, "How do you work this thing?" And I said, you push the button in the upper right-hand corner, and then it'll find the satellite, and then you go. And it takes like a minute to find the satellite. I said, just do it while you're stretching. And uh, I never heard him talk about it again, so I knew. You learned. I sort of brought it up on purpose to confirm what I knew. Well, congratulations on that confirmation.